It's time for Twit. This week in tech, it's a battle of the sexes. Today, we've got two couples. Kind of, I feel like Bob Newbeck's the newlywed game. Stay tuned. Bangs versus Beards, up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 312, recorded July 31st, 2011. Bangs versus Beards. This Week in Tech is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Providing tech support in person is expensive and time-consuming. Save time, money, and look like a hero to clients and colleagues with GoToAssist Express. For a free 30-day trial, visit gotoassist.com slash twit. And by Carbonite. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial plus two free months with purchase, visit Carbonite.com. And don't forget to use the offer code TWIT. And by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing service that gets you paid quickly and makes you look more professional. Get started with a free package at FreshBooks.com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers all your technology needs each and every week. And this is going to be a fun Twit. We're back in the brick Twit house, which makes sense. I mean, I, you, know, you wouldn't build this thing for a million dollars and leave after a week. <laughs> and we have a great team here, uh, again, all in uh, studio with us, which I really like. It's fun. And it, I, I kind of mockingly call this the couples Twit, because it is. It's uh, two couples. You, you don't mind me calling you a couple, do you? Wait, it's not a secret. Sarah Lane, the host of uh, The Social Hour, iPad Today, TNT, my old friend from Tech TV. Hi, Leo. It's good to see I'm you. I'm very Sarah. rarely here on a Sunday. It's kind of fun. It's a little quieter. Yeah. And yet there's a much larger studio audience. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hi, kind everybody. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also joining us, her bow. Can I call you a bow? We've, we've done promise rings, so, yeah. Have you yeah. really? <laughs> Where's my promise ring? <laughs> no, no he was talking about MG and I have done promise rings. <laughs> MG Siegler, my bow, is here. Oh, of course, uh, the best writer on TechCrunch.com. Don't tell Mike I said that. I won't. And uh, Paris Lemon on Twitter. Good to have you both. Welcome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, is this your first time on Twitter? No, you've been on Twitter. I've been on Twitter before, but not in a while. So yeah, not since Austin. Probably it feels like the first. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's when it was. And then to my right, we have uh, yet another couple: the great Veronica Belmont from TechZilla.com, who's been on Twitter many a time. About.me slash Veronica, also the host of Sword and Laser, Laser with Tom Merritt. Yes, which is a wonderful show about sci-fi and fantasy books. Yeah, we actually just saw George R. R. Martin um, down at the Fox Theater in Redwood City. Did you? Yeah. Did you get his autograph? Um, Tom, well, yeah, we, he was doing a book signing. The author so. of Game of Thrones, yeah. Clash of Kings. I'm just starting Clash of Kings, so I'll be ready for the next oh, nice. season. Good. I love those books. They're yeah, great. it's fantastic. Sitting next to her, her longtime companion. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Couples twit, right most nice. awkward twit ever. I feel like Bob I think, Newman. I think we need to. Companion. No, this is not the couples. This is not couples twit. This is beards versus bangs. Beards yeah. versus bangs. Right. That's what is. we're doing. Right. Look at right. that. Wow, that's absolutely You're true. You're on. <laughs> Ryan Black from yeah, Black from uh, Gadget GGGT dot com and of course at Ryan. Beards versus bangs. It is as good. Awesome. <laughs> it's beards versus Leo, bangs. Leo, you have neither. In so. an all time battle of yeah. the sexes. You rep it. You're the Switzerland. Gags and laughs. I'm Switzerland. Yeah. I'm neutral. I'm all alone in the middle. Top story today. <laughs> it's actually the game of the week. The game du jour among tech writers. Yes. Who has more money than the United States? It's a quickly growing list. So <laughs> it's not too, uh, not too hard to find. It people. started. I didn't realize this, but you told me that, that Bill Gates is now on the list. It started yeah. with Apple Computer. Right. Apple has six seventy-six billion dollars in the bank. The right. The U.S. has we don't know what. Not much left. They're yeah, running out. Yeah, it was a, yeah the seventy-three. Now that it's was significantly week. less. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the amount of money they have left to spend before they hit the default ceiling. So it's a silly. No, I mean it's apples and oranges, as you said. Yeah, of course, but. It's you still know, great. And I mean, now Bill Gates is worth more than the uh, U.S. Yes, there are things that these guys can buy now that the U.S. government cannot. That's pretty funny. But it's not like they could bail them out. No. 
that I would mean, be, it wouldn't uh, go very far. Well, we're, right. we're also only talking about buying a cash. We're not right. talking about yeah, l- cash, lending right. power. Right, right. Yep. Is, do they, is, stupid question, Some, but with this esteemed panel, somebody will know, is there still gold in Fort Knox? <laughs> Mm. Remember James Bond? They came and they in, in Goldfinger and they went. And they got all the gold out of Fort. Is there still I, gold I in Fort Knox? I think there is, but yeah. I think it's mainly for tourists, like to see. Yeah, it. there's there's also a lot of gold in the in the New York Federal Reserve as right. well. But did it's you not, see we're, Die we're not, Hard we're with not, a Vengeance? <laughs> that's uh... I haven't actually, but well, I'll I've, make sure I've to been pawning my gold off for years. Have you? you, know, you gold you for sell cash? Gold. Yeah, gold for cash. The you don't really TV recommend gold for cash, do you? No, I don't. Please don't. It's such a ripoff. Really good rates. I know. I don't see the issue here. Why wouldn't you want to get hammer endorsed? What could possibly be right? But so we're not tied to a gold standard anymore. So we no longer have to keep in vaults the amount of gold that you know represents. No, when when the U.S. government wants more money, it just prints it. Prints it. And when Apple wants more money, it effectively just prints it by releasing a new iPhone. Right. <laughs> Practically, that's like printing Basically it. the same it thing. It is like printing That's it. a gold brick. Yeah. Right yeah. There. yeah. What, does it, what does a company like Apple do if they have $76 billion? Do they, is it in Steve Jobs' closet? Do they have it in the <laughs> bank and certificates of deposit? What right. do they do? It's not just cash. It's cash and cash equivalents. They, they have investments uh, in certain things. But, that, yeah, I mean, like... You know, everyone's talking about which company are they going to buy. They're, you know, they're not going to make any super large acquisition anytime soon. They just don't do that. They, just, not, is it a they use it as leverage, and they use it to uh, to secure a lot of the component deals that they need right. to get in order to uh, right. to continue to pump out iPads better than uh, It's not Android a rainy day fund. They're not like saying, oh, what happens if we run out of money? We've got some in the bank. Right. No. Yeah, the, at a certain level, it's they make so much money, they can't really spend it the way... <laughs> They, you know, they, right. they only spend in certain ways. They're not going to go on a huge time. They're not going to triple something? their staff. We, we, we know no, Apple has why, more, why? Apple's worth more than the entire music industry could buy. They could buy the music industry. Well, who, who wants to right. run that business? Right. That's right. a horrible business. Losing money. <laughs> that would be a mistake, yeah. wouldn't it? They, had, they, they could, are building that huge new headquarters, so they're going to use some the money on that. Yeah, the spaceship. But that's not $76 billion. That might be no. $10 billion or $12 billion. The Apple I don't even think that much. The what? Maybe they'll open new stores, the next generation of stores. God knows they're doing that. Uh, Apple now officially is the world's largest, sm- now uh, underscore the word world, the world's largest smartphone vendor. For a long time they've dominated in the U.S., but uh, never did that well worldwide. Nokia was always the biggest. Um, Nokia is now, uh, according to IDC, second place. Which has more to do with Nokia's falling <laughs> yeah, you're right. than Apple. Well, it's I, a little bit of I both. think the reality is yeah. this actually happened a long time ago. We just didn't see it because it really there depends on lag. how you count it. Uh, okay. Nokia is long known for having inflated numbers because they, they consider a smartphone anything that runs Symbian. So they have these really cheap, crappy phones that technically run Symbian, like Symbian Series 3 right. uh, or you know Series 30 or whatever it's called now. And they're not really smartphones. I mean, no one in yeah. the U.S. would ever mistake it for what we think of as a smartphone. Hell, I bought an N- N8, and that's even not much of a smartphone. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, the, the phones that they sell, they're not making them any money. They've always had these inflated smartphones phone numbers they've just been slowly but get this okay so just to okay i'm gonna hide this graph (laughs) it's too late you already saw it ryan's cheating uh who's number three we got apple number one nokia number two who's the number three smartphone manufacturer worldwide i already know this because we talked about it on tnt so i just won't go ahead i won't say well that means veronica's the only one who doesn't know I, I'm looking at the graph. <laughs> I'm not looking at the graph. I'm going to go with already, uh, the Samsung graph was already or open. If it this were the newlywed Samsung. game, yeah. Samsung you'd has been pretty big for me. All be dis- disqualified for cheating. <laughs> Samsung. I, mean, I just nailed it. You, it. you knew it. it. You just knew it. You're right. Forty-eight point nine percent Apple. No, I'm sorry. Other. <laughs> right. Others. Other. Others the big one. Others the big one. Yeah. Eighteen point five percent Apple. Seventeen point five percent Samsung. Actually, Nokia's number three. I'm sorry. Nokia's number three with 15%. That's right after other. And other, you have to assume, is a lot of the Android. other Android. A bunch of OEMs Androids. Who are yeah. all just... Mm-hmm. Like a million Android phones. Yeah. And, and HP's HP. in there. Will HP. putting Windows Phone 7 on Nokia handsets, Ryan, save Nokia? I don't think there's any... There's no silver bullet, right? Well, the analysts that's said one. that Nokia would be number one in... A couple of years because of Windows Phone. Mm. No, I think that their problems are more institutional. It's less to do with what's running on the phones. I mean, yeah, they have problems there, but I think it's more cultural and institutional. They have a real leadership problem at the top. Same thing with RIM. They really need to go clean house. RIM's in trouble, too. We, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see this, actually. Tom's going to talk about this in a second. But uh, BlackBerry has a big event in Canada, a user group meeting. It might be the first time we see BlackBerry 7. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're all him? really excited. About <laughs> I can see everybody's <laughs> jumping up and one. down. <gasps> Not enough to save him. Yeah, it's have, called like Blackberry Night or something in Toronto. <laughs> Whoa, it's, it's that weird. sounds like party. A, like a well, they're, get, they're giving away uh, Blackberry Seven. Well, they're up phones, there. They're up there in Ontario, so that, right. that makes sense. I've, I've said it on Twitter before. I had pretty high hopes for the Microsoft Nokia deal, so I'm still keeping my. Are you? Yeah, I'm still keeping my hopes up for that. iPhone. Because I like Windows Phone. Are you so an iPhone user? I am. iPhone user. Yes. Ryan? iPhone user. Yeah. iPhone user. I'm well, the only the, Android the at the thing, and there's no BlackBerry, and there's no... Uh... The thing is, though, is that... I Windows... have a Windows Phone 7, and I like it. No, I like... I, yeah. yeah, I've used them before. Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people like... Win- yeah, everybody likes Windows Phone 7. There just I aren't like enough of them. But nobody there's, uses there's, them. And there's yeah. no ecosystem still, so yeah. it's just... You know, it's not feasible for a lot of people to buy them. I, just, I don't know. I mean, is it is it possible that it's just going to catch, like, wildfire in the European market? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think that's the hope is that all those Symbian System 30 yeah, users then they'll all just will buy Windows. Turn phones. to Windows Phone 7. But you know, in the, in hit. this in this time between them getting to Windows Phone 7 and you know the last couple of years that Apple's been making these huge gains in Europe, I mean, I don't think there's going to be any going back. <laughs> the chat I mean, on the low end, you've got Android, and then on the high end, you've got Apple. The chat room <laughs> saying, "Android, why, Leo? Why? What's wrong with you? I love Android." What chat room? The, you would think the chat room would be more iPhone. angry about all of us using iPhones yeah. than you using That's an all Android I ever hear about. Chat room's a highly unpredictable area. Chat room, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never yeah. know which way the chat not room is going. Not only <laughs> am I... Is there we go. Android, <laughs> Android, 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 Android rocks. Not only am I using an Android way. phone, but ladies and gentlemen, look what's on my computer right now. It's Windows 7, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want you to know I am a maverick. <laughs> okay, now now Leo, go to the next space over. Oh, oh, you, oh you mean the, the the rest of it, the Apple stuff? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I am actually that's a MacBook Air, but nice. I I cleverly hide it, yeah. so nobody will know. Otherwise, it would be five apples on this table. I know it's a little silly. Is there bias? Do you think in the Twit panel? Question two: Bias in the Twit panel. Sarah Lane. Well, I I mean I do a show about iOS, so obviously I spend a lot of time caring about. Apple's ecosystem for part of my job. So yeah, I mean, I spend you know more I time on on certain OSs than I do on others. But I like to be on on top news wise of all of them. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's that's also part of the job. <laughs> hey oh, hey oh. How are you? What's going on? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Anybody anybody <laughs> screenshot that? <laughs> we got a beard. We got a guy joining the beard team. Yeah. No no. <laughs> a little jealous. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was getting my iPad. Back. It was under the table. <laughs> right next to MG's so that's leg. what they call it these days. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. I, I find I don't use this very much anymore. Well, really? it's funny because you say that on all of the Twitch shows except iPad Today. Well, I, I can't admit it. I can't admit it on this. And Busted. people email me and say, do you know what Leo said on Windows Weekly? I hardly ever week? use it anymore. Well, I'm playing words I don't know with, what your problem is. I'm playing words with friends with my mom. And then she said, why... How come I keep buying stuff from you on We Rule and you never um, c- get back to me on it? I uh, use my iPad a lot because I travel a lot. And it's yeah. Is it a good travel advice for you? Great, yeah. great yeah. travel tool. Yeah. And I've, I've done a lot of tablet comparisons like with the Thrive and with Oh, the, it's so much better than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's just There's easier no to use. I mean, the speed and the, the, the ease of use factor just really makes it a really good travel device. So that's what I use it for. Do, do, you, do anybody use a tablet that they like better than the iPad? No, I just I think it's no. tablets that don't do it for me. I mean, I have a, the 10.1. Yeah, I've got I've got the Galaxy Tab 10, 7. I've got the you have Thrive. The what do you I've think got, of that? Is that a nice I mean, the all, OS is just, just like screwed up on gray, those things. You know? We had uh, you know we had an, a TechCrunch did an event on um, on Friday and we had a uh, Duarte. You did a mobile event, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he took a lot of flack. Uh, it felt a little bit bad for him because for whatever reason, like the audience was mainly pro pro iPhone and, and iOS, and it's just like. I think at one point someone asked him on stage, you know, like, why does iOS look so much better than Android? And, you know, he's the guy in charge of that. And he's just, uh, you know, he had the funny quote, like, why are Sicilians more handsome than other gentlemen? <laughs> we just uh, eat. <laughs> right. Because of the fine Corinthian You know, I will method. say, in fairness, I don't know if this came up because I, I didn't make it down, mm-hmm. but he... The stuff that he's been working on is will a be bit out different. For a while. Yeah, right, right, right. You're, Who is this? What, what you see now Duarte. is not. Yeah, he's the the former uh, WebOS guy. Right. Uh, and before that, he did Helio. And before that, he did Danger. So he's like pretty well respected in the mobile interface. Danger community. was great. Yeah. Uh, WebOS, I thought was great. So it's great. So Just he's working on what? iOS five. Android. Oh, no, no, Android. Android. Yeah. He's he's like the lead visual uh, designer on Android. Um, so he's going to try to make it better. Yeah, I That's think his help. first fingerprints will be the ice cream sandwich stuff, yeah. right? Um, Just a little tip. His first major ones. Rounded corners. I think that makes everything better. 
Well, I think the biggest problem with Android is just that there there isn't any consistency. There's no user interface guidelines. There's no, you know, you know it doesn't no bother me. I like filtration. Android. Well, oh, you mean like the fragmentation of the Maybe I have no taste. Android? I hear this all the time from you iPhone people. Wait. I I think Android looks good. I think it looks good too, but you do get all that fragmentation over the different flavors and you know every every device that comes out has their own kind of spin on it. And so there's not really that cohesiveness that iOS has. But, but you, you have more choice. So if you want a sure. sensation, you get a sensation. If you want a, a galaxy, you get a galaxy. I mean, you have choices. Well, I'll even admit one of my biggest problems with using Android tablets is that I am so accustomed to iOS that I expect things to work right. in a certain way. And that's my own fault. That's, uh, no, that's no downside on Android. That's just my experience. I will grant you that the ta in the tablet world, uh, iPad's got it all over Android. But that's the, I mean, that's the problem with Android in general, is that you want things to work a certain way, mm -hmm. and if the Android experience works in a variety of different ways... Then you get that problem there. Sure, well. you've yeah. got choice, and there's that whole open argument, but it's, as far as creatures of habit go, we, we want things to work the way that they mm -hmm. worked yesterday. Well, and a lot, of, a lot of developers obviously started out with iOS because it was, you know, popular before Android was, and so a lot of them now try and take their applications yes. and port that over to Android, and it's just not easy to do. Anyone you talk to will tell you it's not easy to do, especially because it's just like there's all these different screen resolutions, all these different screen sizes that you have to try and make, you know, pixel perfect designs, which you can do on iOS, and you can't do that on Android. Yeah, right? and, and, and Instagram guys still don't have an yeah. Android app. Right. I Apple, mean, I mean, uh, uh, Google doesn't do anything to help with that either. Right, sure. Like they, they don't officially recognize that as being a problem. Right. Right. Which is a big problem, <laughs> right. right? Like, they, they need to understand that, like, yes, people need a little bit of help kind of unifying all this stuff and making a great, consistent user experience. That I, is not a... That you, you can, there are a thousand things that are wrong that you could, you know, complain about with Apple's ecosystem, but that's not one of them. Very consistent, very good user experience. Yeah, and the trains ran on time in Mussolini's Italy, but I, I think <laughs> if you have the... Tr okay, you with could handsome say... handsome Sicilian gentlemen. And they were all good-looking. <laughs> but, but I think that uh, if you give me a choice between consistent design and a back button, I'll take the back button every freaking time. Really? I hate that. Uh, I hate you don't those, like the back I button? I hate all those buttons. Like, I you just, just want, go backwards. You just go backwards. Back, I just back, want back, more back, screen back. real estate. Like, all yeah. I care about is the touch So the retina estate. display. All right, well, we got a new iPhone... Uh, 4s 5 something coming out september right what, what is yeah, what, what, do you, what do you guys hear yes. september there, mid, there, early? there's going to be one this year no sure question there's year. there's a new one every year probably it's september not, it's not going to be later than the holiday season right and it will be ios 5 right, right. so when ios yeah, 5 sure. comes out you'll get the new phone right yep. right so is that going to uh well how is that going to be different what do you what, what are the rumors on this is it a, is we're we going to you're not going to get better than a retina display the that's, only yeah the only thing for sure is that it will have a better camera i mean that's not for eight, sure but it eight will megapixel be, camera but yeah, it seems have, to agree right and, which is awesome yeah and i've, it'll have I've fast, had eight the megapixel processor. for a long time well in fact then I, you my, already know how awesome my, it is. <laughs> my nokia <laughs> and my nokia n8 has a 12 megapixel camera with a zeiss lens still a crappy phone we were actually kind of going back and forth about this last night because i was like I think five eight five. megapixel that's awesome and mg's like well how often do you blow something up and frame it i mean yeah. for the most part this is all stuff that sounds good on paper but no one's really going to have much of a different experience I, you know i know that this is not everybody but I, for me i haven't had need for more than like just I think megapixels. five right. two. I just want two? a high quality five. Image. Right. No, but like I don't print it. I don't do any. You know, well, I that's just what share I mean it is, online. Is that why, the do, iPhone, why do you need like you know four thousand pixels for the iPhone? Resolution? Looks what good. does that do for you? It's not about the megapixels on the iPhone. It's just good quality. That's right? what I'm saying. Right. You, you yeah. want you want a better quality image. The the, the, the resolution the at a certain lens. point is diminishing returns unless you're actually planning on printing it. I agree, and right. that's why I don't, eight megapixels on the iPhone five or four S doesn't knock me out. Yeah. Will it have four G? Oh. I don't think so. I don't know. No, that's don't what's so interesting. I don't think it will either. Yeah. No. I yeah, I just don't think Apple will go for that yet. I mean, you know, all the devices that are out there right now, they talk about the battery life taking a major ding. And everyone I know who has one, you know, the, the Evo and, and the other ones out there, they just talk about how they disabled 4G most of the time because it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's also about consistency of experience. They want to be able to sell you a phone that you will get that, that speed on everywhere. everywhere right. And mm -hmm. that's just not there yet. So it'll probably be chipsets get oh, a little bit less, li a little bit less costly a little bit more power efficient, network gets a little bit better, and then they release one LTE phone for both Verizon and... Right. That's kind of interesting. There's an example where, it, if, you, if you ask me, consistency could bite you because, 
yeah, in order to be consistent, we have to wait till everybody's got it. And that makes it better for, you know, less sophisticated users. But it, I like it. Yeah, but this, this is the same phone. thing that people were saying with the original iPhone. And that yeah, you know, it Apple was, was it wasn't so even late to the market. It was with, edge. Yeah, right. but then, you know, everyone is saying they were so late to the market with the iPhone right. 3G. And guess what? <laughs> Who cares? They, they, yeah, they still killed it. Yep. So yep. 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 I'm just excited for iOS 5 to be Are you? out and stable what you, and ready to go. What do you mm -hmm. like about it? I like a lot about it, actually. I really like the drop down. And I really like just What's a that? lot of oh, yeah, notifications. Notifications. Yeah. slide down notifications. Yeah, and, we've had um, that for a while. There's a lot of fun stuff in there, <laughs> like editing, being able to edit. St I know. I yeah, know, we've had that I know. for a while. But, but done right. But done right. This time. <laughs> oh, oh, snap! Yeah. Damn. So it's less about the hardware for me and more about the software integrating. What? What are you still laughing at? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, I, I, I what else do you like? like? The voice of the Android generation. I know. It's we forget were it. first. I'm some old fart with an Android. Yeah. I don't pay I keep no finding attention to little me. things that I enjoy, <laughs> like being able to crop and, and do more editing within the um, the, photos the photos themselves. Yeah. I wish there was more like metadata editing on that point. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. yeah. We'll they see. also have the uh, the really nice feature where um, you just double tap and you can launch right into the camera. Yeah. It's like yeah. so many times I mm -hmm. take out my phone to try and do it. I've that works faster for loading the camera than going through the menu system and yeah, that the camera. Oh, yeah, why. Microsoft Windows Phone 7. That yeah, they had the shutter first. button thing, which, yeah, which yeah, Apple's yeah. also doing with the thing. Yeah, and that was good, except that it was, like, so wonky on... I forget which device I had. One of the... the focus? It might have been the Focus. Um, and when you click the little shutter button, it would be shaky every single time. Like, right, they didn't yeah. account for it. Because it was too the, fast. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah too I, think, fast. I think the same thing is actually true of, of iOS 5. Does that so far. Yeah, yeah, you get a little HDR bit of blur issues? on the Like, I know it, it takes, like, you know, the three shots side by side, but they've been split a lot. Weird. So I get these images where I have very it's three a, it's, the it's still a beta. Yeah. But yeah. that's a great idea to be able to, to take three shots and then pick the best, I think, is a very clever... It doesn't do the three up. Well, that's what HDR is. Yeah, the HDR is it actually combines it takes... On either side. Yeah, exactly. It takes the photo three times right. at, at you know varying ISOs, so to speak, exposure levels. It's like that. Combines that. Them. What is that? That Lytro camera? What is the name of that? Mm. That's a clever idea. We'll talk about that when it comes out. I think Trey Ratcliffe's getting one of those next month. Lucky. We'll bring it. Well, he'll, he'll bring Speaking it of HDR, he'll, he'll bring take that some by. great HDR pictures. Oh, amazing. Hey, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the uh, Airbnb rental that went so very bad. I think it's actually Veronica EJ. I think it's, she's. <laughs> that's yeah, you must be really it's upset. Some anonymous know, woman I'm in San Francisco. It, I think it's Veronica. That's my guess. <laughs> some blogger in San Francisco. She works in the tech industry in her 30s. I think. Oh, she's too young. It's, it's it you, might Sarah. be me. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. And I know you use Airbnb a lot, actually. I, I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah but you don't rent. You only. Uh, you you. Oh, yeah, I don't right, want anybody in my right, house. No, You're the no. guy ransacking other people's apartments. Yes. Right. Not the other way. Yeah. Okay. Leaving meth. By the way, yeah, yeah meth everywhere. was a 19 year old meth addict. For meth lab. Oh, they did. All right, well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Stay tuned. But well, that was a good tease, though. Wasn't it? <laughs> I'd meth watch. Lab. I'd stay tuned. I'd listen through this next commercial. And I hope you will, too. You know, if you provide tech support, you know that going to a person's home or office is a pain in the freaking ass. Did I say that? I'm just a little bitter. Uh, you know, we all do it for our family and friends. There's that great, um, I love it, that uh, viral video of John Meyer. Mayer? How do you say that? Mayor. Your body is a wonderland. Mayer? John Mayer. On the street outside of Carnegie Hall in New York City going, no, Dad, no. Click the start. Yeah, no, no, Dad, you can do this. You can do this. Click the start. It's so funny. We've all done it. Let me tell you, if you're in support, you don't have time to get on the phone and talk your... Uh, Talk your clients and colleagues through it. That's why Go to Assist Express from Citrix is such a great solution. It lets you get in there and fix it yourself. It's very easy for you, but more important, maybe, very easy for your supportees. You don't want to have to be supporting the support tool. All you do is you send them a link. They click it. It's Java. So they press, they, they have to get the little certificate. It says allow, and boom, you're in. You're fixing the computer. You could do eight sessions at once. So you can start a scan on one and install on another, move to the next, move to the next. Makes you much more efficient. You can see what operating system are running. That's important, by the way, not only because you can see what version of Windows, but it, it also supports the Mac. So it's cross-platform. Uh, you can see what security software they're running. It's so efficient that GoToAssist Express users were surveyed, and they said, on average, a 40% increase in their productivity. That's like getting two more work days a week. Whether you're in customer support, technical cons consulting, management, a software uh, support guy, computer guru, like this panel here, go to Assist Express. It'll help you increase revenue, reduce travel time, reduce support time, service more clients. And isn't that what we're all about? Servicing more clients. Go to try it right now. 
I thought I'd get a laugh on that. <laughs> a chuckle. That's okay. I'll take it. Go right now. To... I laughed on the inside. Filmnoses.com <laughs> <laughs> slash twit. Please do it for me. So, um, I don't know why they got so much attention on this Airbnb story. Oh, it's well, it's because it's a horrific story. It's, yeah, it's everyone's worst nightmare. Not only is it Seriously. horrific, but they just finished like a big round right, of funding. Right, So, money. what happened? So, what happened is that this woman um, EJ went away. Is EJ is her uh, pseudonym. Yes. Um, and people doubted her existence, but she's since made an updated well, post on her blog. There was some like, thought maybe she was working in the hotel industry and uh, might have yeah, had an axe to grind. Yeah, sometimes the simplest explanation. The story was too specific. specific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she left and um, rented out her, her San apartment, apartment in um, in San Francisco, and she had very limited communication with the people that had decided to rent it through Airbnb. Mistake number one. Yes. She oh, never, that's not her fault. She they, went they through Airbnb. They limit the amount of of contact you can have with the renters until after the whole Money transaction has, has gone exchanged. through. So then, at that point, you can do email addresses or phone calls, that kind of thing. So you have to accept them before you even make any sense. That's how they vet work. Them? That's Man, how they that work. Is a, and they, is that a they do no kind yeah. of they yes, it's a privacy thing. They do no kind of vetting. They do no kind of um, background search so of any kind. So a bad guy could go to airbnb.com mm -hmm. and say, "Let me see what the nicest place in San Francisco is and rent it." Exactly. Yes. Yep. They take no um, it's not in their terms of service to take any kind of responsibility for anything that happens. And that is down in their TOS. That's a flaw, so. by the way. Um, well, the, the hope is well, that they have enough users and that uh, they all grade each other. Yeah. You know, it's like that's a, like that's a, a flaw system, for the way that Yelp chicken works. and egg oh, problem. Oh, so it's right. kind of like eBay. You can look at the person who might rent your place to see what their rating is? Yeah. You can also yeah, look at somebody who's renting a place to see if they get packed to people regularly. Yeah. Were they, you know, was the key easy to find? That sort of thing. So people do like 94% like people recommend this rent right. your renter. Okay. It's a little different though than eBay because with eBay when you have a high value thing that you're selling and you get a first time buyer, just, somebody who's not good on eBay, right? Like right. they don't have the reputation already, you go through escrow. Right? right, like they put the money in escrow, you right. send them thing, right. escrow releases, and everybody's happy. Right, right. so there, there are protection mechanisms that way, but there's no protection mechanism when it comes to you know the object in question is a residence and everything in it. Well, to there's make a long story short, though, her her apartment was trashed. I mean, beyond recognition. They everything. stole stuff. They broke down a door and mm -hmm. got in. They did weird stuff they like they took tags out of her clothes just that's to like weird. that's not they're not going to get anything out of that just to scare her pretty much. Yeah, it was very weird. Yeah. While they, so, while they were messaging yeah, her like not, that, oh, you know, we're having a great time here. Yeah, and sending her really polite same. emails yeah. back and forth, being like, oh, there's so much light in your living room, it's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. we're really enjoying well, our time Well, there was, here. until we broke all the windows. Yeah, yeah. And so wow. she came back, and she has no recourse through Airbnb, basically. Because it's in their terms of service. Right, and so she dealt with the SFPD a little bit, but then... Airbnb released a statement saying, you know, we're really sorry this happened. We've been working with this person very closely to try to figure out how we can help her, you know, get the person in custody, figure out how we can make her feel safe and secure. But she later came back and said that after June 30th, all her communication with the customer representatives at Airbnb stopped after she posted her now that, first blog post. That date is significant because it was after the blog post but before their funding round. I guess so. Was it? Really? I think so, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this was about a so month ago. So, this was the theories that, well, we want to shut this thing up because we got a funding round. And coming. I guess one of the co founders actually called her and talked to her a little bit and was like, we'd really like you to take down this blog post. Mm -hmm. We'd really like you to censor this. They didn't say censor, but, you know, put it behind Do a, us a, a favor. wall. Yeah, secure not, it, yeah. lock it down. And um, she was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And that's kind of how it's he said, she said now between Airbnb right. and this person, this anonymous, quasi anonymous person. She obviously doesn't want her real name out there because she doesn't want any kind of, you know, more privacy invasion than she's already going through. Um, but they say they had a, a, a suspect in custody, yet she hasn't heard that from the SFPD either. So on her end, everything is still as it was a month ago. Yeah, Airbnb pretty to, much said there's, there's somebody in custody, but because it's an ongoing investigation, we can't, we tell, can't you. tell you any more about it, even though this is her home. Yeah. And, and these were people that were in her home. Isn't there also like this whole sideshow um, with the situation with, with TechCrunch too? And like, yes. All, as the, all this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah exactly. So as Mike, always. Mike but, got involved a little bit. Right. right. Well, yeah, because, you know, there was some name calling. Well, not that anyone would call Mike a name. Yeah. 
Uh, as, I mean, I don't want to get too much, too into this, but as I understand it, and I, I haven't really even followed it that closely. Like there was stuff that happened yesterday with uh, with uh, Paul Graham of Y Combinator, who you who know, is the funder, is, is one, one of the, the original investors. backers yep. of, of Airbnb. And by the way, a huge supporter of Airbnb. Yep. Paul's been going around saying this is the next big thing. This is going to be bigger than eBay. Right. It it, uh, it disrupts hotel. Uh, hotel chains. Well, I'm starting to hate that word. <laughs> yeah, well, it changes no business. No, it's I know what you mean. From, what <laughs> but it, uh, <laughs> nice plug. Just, well yeah. done. It's just a um, no. But so, you know, it's and, another. It's another. He said, she said thing. I mean, it's just now like you know. Uh, I guess Paul Graham wasn't so sure of the validity of what um, Mike said. The people from Airbnb had told him. And he's saying, absolutely, that's what they told me. And, you know, we went back and forth even. And so, you know, now it's now it's a whole other thing. He actually, he just wrote another post that I'm looking at right now. The, yeah, I just Another that. Airbnb sure victim tells his it. story. Ooh. There were meth pipes Ooh. everywhere. What? This is a separate person. What is yeah, going this, on this with just, these meth people on Airbnb? Well, wow. think about it. It's the perfect, like, ruse. You can, you can rent a place for a short amount of time, basically do whatever you want, and yeah. they can't track you. Yeah. So it, instead of having your, your, your regular meth, house you can kind of spread your i don't know right it's not like you I have to this look somebody in the eye at the <laughs> hotel know, works, right. before is, you go into the room so t airbnb is a, one of the reasons it's a tech story is they're really a darling of the startup world they mm -hmm. just raised right. 112 oh, totally. million dollars over a billion dollar valuation we have used airbnb We've used as, it. it's great. As, as renters yeah. i was impressed you went to paris last december you yeah. got a, a much better place in the same across the street from the Louis. very expensive hotel i was paying yeah. for you got yep. a much we better paid apartment. about it was like a hundred Bucks a night, I was which is four hundred bucks a night. For like a, it's amazing. In and Paris. I've been looking into it for a trip that I'm taking with some of my girlfriends in in the winter, like like out of the country. Mm -hmm. and same thing. I've been like, oh, Airbnb, this will be perfect. We can rent a little cottage. We can have a great time. Not have to deal with the hotels. And now I'm like. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Like even though I'm the one who's doing the renting, I still. Feel well, I think it'd be okay it. to be a renter. Well, hey, crazy is all over the place, right? right. I mean, uh, somebody who's uh, so is so. I guess out really, through you can be renting something out as well, and maybe you get to right. yeah. Costa Rica and you can't get in. That right. would be The house bad. doesn't exist or that something like that. That would be like bad. That. Yeah. And that, but that happens to anybody on a, on a home exchange. That right. can happen anytime. I feel like this is. You know, it, it looks very bad for Airbnb right now, but I think that, you know, this will pass eventually. It's it's very much a chicken and egg problem where mm -hmm. it's just like they don't have they have so many first time users of right. this service and that it's the just ratings are their rating yeah. thing and they and they've already talked about things that they're gonna change. They're gonna yeah. offer insurance now, they're gonna have other That's things. Well and um, also like Craigslist, for example, one of the points that EJ made in her post was that if I did this on Craigslist, I would be reminded time and time again that this is on my own yeah. you know, watch for is, fraud. This is me. Watch yes. for fraud. Here's some Make, you know, do this on guidelines. your own. You know, it's not. It's, we take no responsibility for what happens. Right. She felt like she wasn't su sufficiently warned through Airbnb. Which well, it's, it's also slightly different too because Craigslist is uh, kind of like a standard for classifieds, whereas Airbnb is actually marketplace. And uh, the marketplace aspect, the, the exchanging of money, mm -hmm. the reputation system, that creates different expectations. That's and true. yeah, Airbnb true. absolutely needs to step up here. I think. Yeah. Yeah. What are the things I think that? Um, plays into this a little bit uh, is, so for example, the place that we rented last December in Paris, it worked out really well for us. No kidding. We were there for just a few days and, and everything was fine. We never met the person that rented it out, but we had, a, had it, a the key was where key he said it would be right. and, and it was fine. It was also pretty obvious that he didn't live there. It was a, it was a, uh -huh. some sort of a sublet situation. And I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time trolling Airbnb because I do yeah. like, ooh, let's go to Berlin and what are my <laughs> options there, that kind of thing. So I've looked at a lot of apartments and you can, st you, you can kind of tell that a good amount of them are not actually lived in by anybody. It's some sort of extra, maybe it's something that somebody owns and they're trying mm -hmm. to get, you know, pay their mortgage on. And there are legal what, situations around that in the United States. Uh, that too, right. yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of landlords are really scared of Airbnb because they don't want people subletting because that's it's usually uh, not, not a kosher thing to do. But I think that Airbnb is, um, f they're well aware that for the, mo for, well, not for the most part, but a large amount of people are not actually renting out places where they live and their mm -hmm. coffees in the uh, in the cabinet and their underwears in a, you know, in the dresser. Well, that's typical of a vacation rental in general. It right? is, but the problem is, is that some people are. I mean, this was actually someone's home where she had all of her personal belongings. And apparently didn't secure them very well. No. Is it kind of like a zip car or these, I mean, Right now, Zipcar It's more works. like the get-around thing than, I'm just than saying, Zipcar. because yeah. Zipcar is so small, 
and it's used by a but small no group of hipsters. Car. No one owns the cars you know, except I'm just, Zipcar. But, but I'm saying it works right now because it's a small group of kind of tight hipsters, and so it's okay. <laughs> what? No, what, that? Saying, what does that even it's, mean? It's, it's, like, it's like, okay, follow me here. It, it's right, like, keep Google, going, keep yeah, you're hipsters. There's it's some like, beatniks yeah, using Zipcar, it. Zipcar has background tracks. It's, it's used Someone's by like, people with bangs and beards. Okay, let's, I'll, be, I'll be honest. No, but I mean, it's kind of like um, a Google Plus. It's used by a small group of kind of have a certain socioeconomic level and as soon as it becomes public i wonder if airbnb's model sustains in other words uh, just in the same way as wonder if zipcar's model sustains as soon as the you know i really think it does i mean i think that if they get big enough you know is if they keep growing it because that because what we've seen now the ratings becomes, help yes the ratings help they'll, they'll yeah. have other ideas that they're already trying to implement they had a thing that's actually pretty smart that they did before this obviously it didn't help here but they have a good Facebook connection where you can tell if, like, there's a second-degree connection that you know someone who's, like, rented like this place before type, of thing. type hmm. situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fundamental issue is, though, you have to just, at, at you know, the, the core level, you have to believe that not everyone, you know, someone's not going to be a jackass with your apartment. Well, that's the problem. Like, that's some, people, that not, are people aren't evil, you know? But people are evil. She's also, e just, e your has also said. Just because you're hipsters living in San We don't think people are evil. Yeah. She also said... It, going back through the email correspondence she that I had with this person, these better. people, there was a funny name spelling, yeah. th things were said that were weird, and of course, in hindsight, that happens a lot, where you go, right. gosh, I should have known, I should have uh, trusted my intuition that something was a little off here. I so she even says, there was something off, I just wanted to believe it was going to be fine. I guess the real reason that Airbnb gets these big value, this billion dollar valuation is because people think it will compete with Travelocity sure, right. and travel agents. And, and it is. Essentially compete against hotels. Yeah. And in fact, Airbnb really doesn't start taking off until hotels start using it in addition to vacation rentals, right? That's when, that's I think what the model is. You don't get to a billion dollars unless people book all Oh, you mean their if hotels start parting their, their on listings Airbnb, through here? Yeah. yeah. That's when you become valuable. Because every you go there right, for whatever use it your needs because they have openings and they just yeah. want to put it in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, that's I'm sure that's what that Paul Graham that. and the other right. investors are thinking. I just right. don't understand why Airbnb didn't take this really bad situation they should have been as a much great more opportunity for PR. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have handled it. Big time. They could have big they could have made a big deal out of this and how they were going to help this woman restore her. Uh, you know, her not only her ransacked home, but you know, her trust in the company, and instead. They did this sort of weaselly, please take your blog well, post was, down, There was we a great money. comment on it on one of the sites. It may have even been one of the TechCrunch posts that was like, they could have flipped this around because what at the end of the day, say, when yeah. you go the extra step to help a customer like this, they're going to remember it in a really good way. Exactly. And that's what's going to be out there. But if you screw over a customer, they're going to blow that up three times what it originally was and, and, yeah. and remember and, that forever. And, and, and because of blogs thing. and social media, yeah, that customer has a megaphone. It amplified. Right. I mean, how they thought this wouldn't get out there well, you know, the thing, one the way thing, or another. The thing with Airbnb is like the, the, the moment you hear the concept of what they do, you're like, oh crap, you know, I'm going to do this and my place is going to get trash, right? Like that's that's the the thing that you kind of like that, what, that's why what goes I wrong? Yeah, that's, rent out my place. You could right. tell he was that's a New why. Yorker. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's got Absolutely. This, he understands that people are evil. Yeah. No, you know, it's like yeah, I might use it, but your initial thing is like why wouldn't I use it? You know, you kind of think about like why are the reasons I'm not going to use something? Instantly, yeah. that's what I'm you gonna think. going to break my favorite dish or yeah, something. Yeah, so like at that. some point this is going to happen, right? Like it felt to me like this is inevitable. That's why the story was so interesting and big instantly is because it felt so inevitable it's like in fact i think a lot of people reading the story thinking what an idiot didn't i mean of course this is going to happen what a surprise right, right? Well, so it's going to happen so it's like how, why, why, why are they not better prepared this. for this right well and airbnb clearly i mean there that is the lesson handle it badly they should have done a discovery channel home makeover and made a big deal out of it exactly. they should well, have I mean, said, we are going to turn her house into a palace I think they did in the long run. They rebuilt it, didn't they? Yeah, but there, then there are these, these, you know, this, this other flip side to that, which is then you're going to get a bunch of sketchy people, you know, renting out their place and then trashing it. it. Yeah, yeah right. and then trashing yeah. it and then expecting oh, Airbnb to pick up the tabs, yeah, right. too. So they're you definitely have to be really careful with really, your really, exception. See, he's really cynical. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, people try to get this. Let's, 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 let's not try to, uh, let's not try was, to dance around that. There was also that. MG's colleague, Paul Carr, wrote up a really interesting article over the weekend about the idea that because of the way this market is for services such as this that are very dependent on ratings and social, and, and it's a competitive place right now. Right. 
Um, if you're going to be successful and you're going to have a grand exit and you're going to make a lot of money, you have to have a lot of users. And when you start talking about users in the millions, you start thinking about those users less as people and more as data. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you know, this is not an evil company we're talking about. This is just the way that you have to start thinking about your user base, not so much as people, but as Numbers, uh, statistics. Right. And, and then like you get into trouble when you're situation. talking about some, someone's personal belongings. Good point. Because so. it isn't really, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, but a good lesson. I mean, I think you would think that lesson would be well learned by anybody in a startup these days is that social media can kill you, blogs can kill you. Be very aggressive and proactive when something like this happens. Mm -hmm. It costs you a lot less to do that. We're going to take a break. This is a great, this is like, I feel like we're at a great dinner party, <laughs> but we just don't have any food or beverages. Oh, I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, we can fix that up right quick. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Bring Locke out the pig from GDGT is here. Well, I've got a surprise for you. We've been roasting a pig all day. Leo, you know, I'm already ordering pizza right now. <laughs> you could. It's actually. coming at any moment. Yeah, and I think people know the address, and so I imagine it won't be just you, but thousands of people all over the country. That's what I'm waiting for. The, what, is, what is Twit's Airbnb fiasco going to be? A hundred pizzas arriving at the door? No, you said Sounds that. Sounds awesome. You just said that please now. don't do that, please. Please. <laughs> please don't do that. Ryan Block is here from GDGT. Uh, what do you guys got going on? Uh, any new? You got a redesign. Looks beautiful. Thank you. What else is up? Just working on a whole bunch of new features Fantastic. related to this year. I yeah. love it. Great. Really, site. really, really busy. So, the social of uh, gadgets, gadgeteering. Really enjoy it. Thank you. Also, Veronica Belmont from Techzilla. You know, we had Patrick on last week. I know. It's kind of, we should someday get both of you on. Well, we're going to get you out of the cottage sometime. I've never down been. to the Revision 3 studios. No, I, I've never been to the Revision 3 studios. Get ever. out. Really? Never. All right. I didn't, you know, I wanted to do this in a clean room environment. I didn't want Jim Ladder back to say, you stole everything. So I, 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 now I can go. Now I can go. I I Jim has been called out. <laughs> also, here's Sarah Lane, who has been around the Twit Brick House for a while. Ooh. She, uh, of course, one of the founding members of Twit, and it's always good to have uh, Sarah. She's on TNT every weekday, 2.30, uh, or when Leo gets around to it, Pacific Time, 5.30 Eastern. They're laughing as if they knew. Yeah. This, it it's hasn't funny, been my a, fault this week. It's... Well, we were in a new studio, yeah. so there we're, were all sorts we're of technical kinks. things to work yeah, out. Yeah. But in a couple of weeks, we'll be back to just Leo running long. Sarah said a th <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. I don't care. It's Tom. Sarah said a funny thing about Tom. iPad today, and I think it's true of this, too. She said it looks, uh, the, the lighting looks to, what did you call it? Prime time? Prime time. It's like too moody? Like, it looks like CSI Los Angeles? What are you talking about? Well, when I say prime time, I don't mean that shows on prime time aren't good shows. It has a... It's modeled. A uh, nighttime, yeah. shadowy look. It does now, feel like it's nighttime when you look at the, at the yeah. picture. Now, yeah. Now, I have no problem with that, but it, it brings out, um, I don't know. You feel like a vampire when Well, you I know? just don't know if it works with an often lighthearted nature should, of our programming. Right, right. News should be more uh, bright. It's a little, lit. yeah. It's uh, it's just something that I noticed. I'm not well, saying it's, it's good bad. You're not alone. The chat room, the chat room uh, said it's a little dark in here, and we do have to put more light. We have not it looks like CTU. Someone said that's kind of... What's CTU? From uh, 24, the, oh. uh, the counter this, it kind of counterterrorism does. unit thing. It right. does. Yeah. It does a little bit. And they're all using Macs. We need Macs. to start interrogating each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? MG Siegler is also here, a great writer for uh, TechCrunch, which just got the new 8-bit redesign. I <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> I'm sure you had nothing to do with that. That was all Ariana's doing. Right. She, I love uh, it. I love it. I love good. the big... I know there's been some criticism, but I... I think no, I love the design. I you had everything cool. to do with it, didn't you? I did. No. See, there you go. Absolutely. That's He's how it works. Lying. No. no. You uh, did? All, really? I, all I care is that it's so much faster than it was. And, uh, it is. Did you move it, to it doesn't, WordPress? It doesn't crash my browser anymore. It doesn't crash browsers yeah. anymore, yeah. Was we, it? We've been on WordPress for a while, and we're staying okay. on WordPress. We were going to... It, there's there's talk, you know, of what we're going to transition to behind the scenes. Of course, you know, there's the the weblog stuff going on, and then uh, then uh, the Huffington Post runs on. I think it's their own custom version of uh, that's the type last type. thing movable you type. want. Movable type, yeah. right? Well, isn't that funny? Because Boing Boing just moved off movable type to WordPress, right? Well, I love WordPress. It's great. I think WordPress is fun. It's amazing that WordPress can handle sites with this kind of traffic. Yeah, it's the oh, WordPress man. VIP WordPress thing. Has yeah. Insane. Resources. Yeah, yeah they're, they're good. They're, they're out of control. Yeah. They're doing some good stuff. Yeah. Oh, you mean you're on WordPress.com? No. Yeah, it's the WordPress.com VIP. You're on their like server. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You would think AOL would have changed that. Huh? There was talk of it, but yeah, we just decided for now we're going to stick with this. If it good. ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. It is fast. It's really fast. Much, much faster. I noticed that because uh, I'm always pulling up articles from TechCrunch. 
And uh, good. Yes. 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 Is the best. Yes. Love it. Even that Mike Arrington guy. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to buy a brick that says "Screw you, Mike Arrington," but nobody <laughs> did. It's not well, too late. Well, they will now. It's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Arrington should buy a brick and say whatever Screw he wants you, to Leo say. Screw you, Leo Laporte. There to you go. Hang it on the wall. I would put it up if Mike did that. I would put it up. I'll tell him. All right. Say, "Screw you, Leo. <laughs> you're such a troll." <laughs> that would be great. Get a picture of troll I, face underneath. I would, I would love that. That'd be, That'd be hysterical. I'd go for that. I'd go for that. Hey, let's take a break. We're going to come back with more with this excellent panel. I, I, I don't even want to say it. The couples version. I, I shouldn't Beards say Beards versus that. bangs. Beards Plus versus Leo bangs. Switzerland. And I am Switzerland. But first, let's talk about backup. Backup done right with... You know, I hear them saying it at home, Carbonite. Carbonite.com is online backup. It's kind of a neat story. The guy who started it, David Friend, uh, got out of, he was a Yale graduate, I think went to gra uh, graduate school at MIT, got out of school and built the ARP synthesizer. Had a great company, ARP. Remember ARP? Every rock and roll band in the world used ARP, and he just had a great life. Retired. Uh, said, I'm done. I'm going to take it easy. One of those entrepreneurs who, you know, said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And then his daughter, who's in college, calls him and says, Daddy, I just lost my term paper. I've got no backup. And he thought, you know, there really has to be a better way to do this. And he got back in the game and created Carbonite, an online backup service that backs up your data wherever you are whenever you're online. It uses 128-bit SSL, so it's safe to use at an open access spot like students use at coffee shops and stuff or at home. Um, it, you can encrypt your data further using strong encryption, so your privacy is guaranteed. And the price is right. I actually put it on, it's funny, it comes, goes full circle because I put it on my daughter's computer when she went to college so that I wouldn't get that call that David got. Unlimited online backup, $59 per year per computer. That's less than five bucks a month for everything on your internal drive. And I mean, I, I'm telling you, you don't ever have to think about how much data I have. You just back it up. And you can get to that data anytime. So it's cloud storage, too. So you can go to your Carbonite account on a Mac or a PC. There's your stuff. They also have smartphone apps, iPad, iPhone, Android, BlackBerry even. So you always can see your data. It's cloud storage, unlimited cloud storage for 59 bucks a year. You know, compare that to Dropbox or anybody else, you'll realize what a good deal that is. It's also uh, very easy to restore. That's important. And you can try it free for two weeks right now. Go to Carbonite.com and use TWIT as the offer code. C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E. Carbonite.com. Offer code TWIT. They've been a great supporter of TWIT. Uh, David is a great friend. David Friend is a great friend. It sounds a little strange, but it's true. And I uh, really appreciate uh, their support uh, for everything we do here at Twit. And I strongly encourage you to check out Carbonite for your backup needs. Moving along to, uh, let's see what else we got here going on. Google Plus. I hate, somebody sent me an email saying, stop talking about Google Plus, it's not public. And yet there are, what, 20 million people on it? I mean, it might as right. well be public. Is there anybody... Our, I'm still let's getting, ask our studio I'm audience. We have about 25 people in the studio audience. How many of you are on Google Plus? Pretty much everyone. Everybody. Yeah. There's a few not. Who wants an invite in the audience? Anyone? Don't say that, Veronica. Yeah. You'll be sorry. Okay, we'll get in the if audience. You're, I think if in you're this in the audience. studio, this audience. we'll give you an invite. There are definitely people still asking. I mean, are there on a daily basis for invites? So, so people are, are not able to get in, I guess. Lawrence Hubbard, uh, we asked on uh, Google+, Plus, uh, ironically, uh, Eileen Rivera, my producer, said, well, what do you want to talk about on Twitter? And one of the things that uh, Lawrence Hubbard on Google+, Plus said is, what are the pros and cons of opening up to the public? It's still in the field test state. <clears throat> this is kind of the Airbnb issue, yeah. the zip card issue. What happens if everybody's on Google+, Plus? is it suddenly Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, and a bunch of people you don't care about? Uh, I mean... Google could have opened this up right away. They certainly have the infrastructure to be able enough, to do that. You yeah, bet. Uh, I think that the, what they wanted to do was, first of all, it's it's been good for Buzz, um, not Buzz the product, which sucks, but the <laughs> other, uh, but Buzz, <laughs> Buzz. Industry Buzz, Industry Buzz. It almost feels like Buzz 2.0. Like they learned a lot of lessons yes. from Google I'm just Buzz. I'm waiting for them to fold it in so Buzz is gone. Kill uh, Buzz, yeah, please. Buzz will be gone. Yeah. 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 Buzz kill. Um, Wait, it's not already gone? <laughs> no, it's still no, around. and it's like yeah, it's yes. part of Google Plus. It's but it's, but it's, it's like the email, Living yeah. Dead. Yeah. It's like a zombie yeah. that just kind of slowly moves forward. Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody's there. It's just the auto posts. I mean, I have an account there that's posting all the time. I still get responses on mine every day. You check it. I, I check it because it goes to my Gmail. Uh, I see it in my in my web Gmail. Because you have no choice. It, it I wrote a few there, a yeah. few posts about like you know us removing the buzz button on TechCrunch or whatever. And, Did you? Yeah, and about 
all 25 users got really up in arms <laughs> and came to the comment section. And, How dare you remove That's the Buzz button? That's what they do. I vividly remember leaving Buzz and all of the hate I got from the 12 people who still used it. Right. Uh, like somehow... I don't oh, ever really leave anything. That was my mistake. I should have just said, right. I'm just still quietly, here. Uh, I'm still yeah. here. I'm still posting. Well, the, I love Buzz. You know, I, I don't know if I 100% agree that they Look at two people started could've... following me. Look at that. Two. Two. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I agree that they could have just like rolled it out instantly, right? I mean, like Gmail is a pretty good example. Like they have had really, really bad scaling, scaling issues. Problems, I yeah. know that you, you know, I, I, I hear you complaining <laughs> about this a lot, about, and right. I, it's, I totally feel it too. I right. can't even use Gmail over the web anymore because it's so slow for really? me. Really? Yeah, it's just so slow. What? Sometimes, not it's all the time. I have that almost issue. all the time. It's I gotten a little bit better, but that. there was like a while where it was like unusable. every in the mornings. It's and like especially first. especially for Google, who's obsessed with speed, like they're right. just so obsessed with speed, yeah. it's really uncharacteristic. So I think, you know, well, that just popped up for me. Nobody's really You're ever it's better, like, it's better in the morning. Yeah, more bad, more, more batter. better, <laughs> the batter a bad, Wicked more batter guy. <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody's really ever gained anything by not letting their customers use their product for an extended period of time. You, you got to let people, you got to let them in some, sometime. Right? I think they like also... There, there are laws of physics that must be about They it. had said, I met with them a little bit before it launched, and the reason why they wanted to do the, the staggered rollout is also because they really did want to iterate on the fly. They knew this time that they wouldn't nail everything out of the box, even yep. though they had been dog food, you know, internally dog food testing it. Um, you know, they had done that with Wave, and, and Wave was great internally, but then when it was released, there were so many things that were wrong Ugh. with it. So they knew that, like, as long as they could do this, um, this staggered rollout, uh, still on a massive scale, they would get a lot of good feedback on it. And I think that they have. Well, they, yeah. I mean, there's certain things that obviously need to be worked out, like collapsible comments would mm -hmm. be really nice. Yeah, it seems like the number one request. And, yeah, I want options on what notifications that I see. If someone I don't know shares a post with me, I want to be able to toggle that notification on or off. I use Google Apps, which is made using Google Plus uh, with Google Apps unusable. Now I have to use two browsers, or I have to go incognito within Chrome. It's like there are there are things that they probably new would would be an issue but now they see how many people it's affecting okay you know do 100 people have this problem or do a million people have this problem so yeah that's that's My all part of the learning experience right now is people commenting on way earlier things like posts or, or albums or something right. or just the repeating the time, yeah. animated the gif yeah. that keeps coming right. back again so stuff like that, that, that freaking squid that comes alive with the soy sauce if i have to see that one <laughs> i jump every time i think i gave him nightmares for a week i was like this is hilarious and like, oh, it's so i didn't watch awful. it because i knew it would be awful you haven't seen, seen it, it. not well I've, I've seen it it's, in my feed i just don't not really a lot eileen you got this is it coming up on the uh i'm gonna pull it up <laughs> if I search for squid. Right, warning, it is kind of horrifying to see, but the squid is dead. This is, wait a minute, dead. there's no plus it's on Google+. It's just reacting to the, to the salt There's no search on Google+. Plus. Plus. How but would I even find it? How does it do it? that when it's dead? Well, because it has muscle contractions oh, based yeah. on the, yeah. It's just yeah, it's, um, it's like weird. It's stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, Facebook, you know Facebook, I Facebook does the same it, thing. I can't find it because there's no search on this thing. Yes, yeah, search is another major yeah. lacking thing. It's only Google, you know. Maybe I can Facebook does the same thing, though. They don't roll out features to their entire user base right, instantly. Exactly. Even the biggest launches where they get everybody in the room and they, you know, they, they talk about how awesome it is, right. uh, that comes out over the course of weeks and sometimes months uh, before it hits the entire user base. So, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's not that unusual. When you're talking about the scale of tens, hundreds of millions of people, you can't open, you can't fling the doors wide open. It's very, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's ever actually done that successfully. Like, had a, a, a Buzz might flawless, have been successful did launch they, did with they hundreds of with millions of users. I don't remember it being a rollout for I think Buzz. that they rolled it out much faster anyway, but yeah. What do you guys actually think of Google Plus? Do you like it? I really like it. I mean, I've been having fun using it. I've almost been... Um, I love it. I've been off Facebook almost. I haven't know, been using Twitter at all. Probably 80% off Facebook. Yeah. Um, I think it's fun. I think the interactions there are really good. I like the sharing features. Still a lot. driving traffic to uh, your pages, everybody. I mean, I, you know, I actually haven't checked much. I don't blog I my own content are. that much right. on on Google Plus, so I haven't really. I seen. don't either. Yeah, I use it really more for just sharing stuff I it's like on thing. the internet yeah. rather than personal brand sharing kind of stuff. You know, that's one of the successes of it. It's just its own thing. It's not a reshare of your Twitter feed or your right. blog posts. It's just your Google Plus shares. And mm. when there really is a conversation to be had around something, that's where I've really seen the benefit yeah. of people having really great discussions and you know better than I've seen on Twitter. Better than and I've seen there on it Facebook. is, ladies and gentlemen. The oh, there he goes. Uh, oh, it's creepy. Whoa. So it's not alive, but Dude, they pour soy sauce me. on it. Why? 
Okay, that's just painful. That is so weird. <laughs> you never saw that before? Well, it's, not, it's like, it's, oh. why is that being shared that much? The funny that thing great. is, Trey Ratcliffe just reshared that. He's so been you busy can't, in Paris. It's on the top of pictures. my stream. You just can't get away from this thing. <laughs> this thing lives on Google Plus. Well, that, again, that's the issues that things are getting reshared again, right, yeah. by. There you, is a you're plugin. already friends with the first sharer, and then you're friends with the next person who shares it, and right. then the first sharer is. They just need to talk to the friend feed guys who learn these lessons right. like over the course. The, of the friend feed guys who are all now at, at Facebook. Facebook. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those guys. Hey, friend feed guys. How do we make Google hey, Plus better? How do we kill you? Hey, Google Plus guys. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you stop calling me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to actually bet that exchange actually happened. Paul Buhai said, "Nah." Brett Taylor, "No, I'm not going to tell you." What are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. I think the the circles and the ability to filter. I wish I could filter the opposite way where I, I tried a little experiment where I tried to make a group of a circle of sword and laser people mm -hmm. and then I realized that was a bad idea because now there's a lot of people I don't know showing up in my in my primary Overall. timeline. Yeah. yeah, I only added like 150 people but that was a mistake. It's not the way it should be used and I learned that lesson pretty quickly. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that people can filter me out if they don't want to see me in certain circles, you know, mm -hmm. if they just want. But that's the thing, like I don't just post tech stuff, I post funny stuff or I post Game of Thrones stuff. And it's hard to right. pick circles. And I feel bad because I don't want to be, yeah. you know, yeah. in, the, in a different area than people expect me to be in. And then, you I know, still think the circles thing valuable. is going to break down really quickly. I think yeah. it's just people are just going to use it for friends. You know, there, there's standard ones. There's friends, um, you know, coworkers mm -hmm. and family. And that's like it, yeah. you know, maybe. And maybe people will use one of those. Like, or just like, because they make you drag everyone in, at, at least into one circle to be able to, to see it. I just, I don't think that that's going to scale. I think it's a good idea at first. And uh, you know they make they have a really nice mechanism for doing it, but then when you have to manage it, it's a huge pain. I mean, no one's gonna go back in and say like, oh, but it's well, a actually, lot easier than it. it was on Facebook. It is, it is, Which but is, it, it was broken on Facebook, benefit, and yeah. they're they'll first to admit that too. Here's a, something that collapses the Google Plus. Screen. Yeah, I use I use one of those. There's a lot of uh, extensions on Chrome for uh, Google Plus. There's some that including I've one that will really see helpful. a GIF that you've seen before and block future. I don't know. It must be doing some sort of image recognition. And it will block it again from your stream in the future. Oh. Isn't that clever? Yeah. And you're watching out for the file name. Clever, mm -hmm. but again, the chat this is all stuff that eventually Google Plus should have That's natively. Off. I think we should just make it a rule. Everybody watching, stop resharing. Mm. We already mm. saw it. Stop hey, resharing. I just reshared your stop it. Twit, twit live. Stop it. <laughs> you know, stop watch my it. show. Don't do right, it fine. anymore. Stop fine. spreading the word. Make That's your not own what the internet's for. Leo, you're done. <laughs> Make your own stuff. <laughs> Type what I said, but in your own words. It would be <laughs> nice if they could filter out stuff yeah. you've seen already in a share. Just stop resharing. That, that's not a Google Plus problem. I have that problem on Tumblr where mm. I'm following five Big people with similar interests. Yeah. It's always bothered me, and I don't know what the solution no. is. Tumblr's, they haven't figured it out either. Um, that's just a problem with something that a lot of people find interesting and then friendships overlap you mm -hmm. start seeing but the that same is stuff. how we learn it's just not as intrusive on Twitter right it happens on Twitter yeah. but you don't see the image right. right so it's easier to skim over uh, it's just it's what social is all about right is everybody that's how you know a thousand people uh, you know say that Michael Jackson's dead well you know that's how you see it right, right. that's how you know MG you wrote an article about Google's new page speed service this is just wild yeah, they're. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but yeah, they're they're apparently um, they want people to switch over to using. How do you do this? So you have to switch over to using Google's DNS uh, servers, okay. and then when you do that, you basically grant them access to be able to look at the the way that your site is is written, and they can reconfigure things to to make it um, as fast as possible in their in their view of how. So they instead can serve of using, so I'm registered on Hover.com. Instead of using right. Hover's DNS servers, right, you would switch. I would to go to ghs.google.com in the CNAME entry, and that's it. Yeah, I'm do and, that. well, and you sign up for the the, <coughs> the page speed service. I want to do that. Again. So, it what does Google get out of this? Concept, but it Money. doesn't like the stuff that does really basic. So, you know, like it compresses your right, JavaScript, it compresses, yeah, right. like minifies your CSS and stuff like that, right. which is great. But so does we it actually, cache? It does, does it do any caching? It does, it does caching. Does some edge caching. Um, but if you're if there's like anything dynamic on your page, like it's not really going to work. We actually tried it. Just you know, well, for, of course not. If it redraws a page every time. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, we we were just like kind of fooling around. So we we uh, we did like a you know the tool that estimates how much 
faster your site's going to be. And we tried it on Gadget, and uh, it was like five to ten percent slower, I think. <laughs> like right. it actually said, like red negative, like you lose speed by doing this. So they actually well, at least they told you that. Yeah, yeah so no, I know. It's like they, yeah, they they try to be. And this is going to be a paid service. So when you said money, it's not yeah. right. It's free for now. They're trying it out for free, but yeah, eventually it'll be a paid thing that they offer. Hmm. So I'm um, now they have a test, a web page test where I could run twit.tv through it. Uh, natively, and then through it, we'll see. We'll let this run. There are other people who do this, like apparently uh, Cloud, a long Cloud Flares one, um, and they, but they, you know, I think they they did a thing at Disrupt, but they um, they they focus what more was, on what, security, yeah. the aspect of it, and as a side effect, you get a better uh, page load time. Mm. Huh. So the test started 30 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, this takes a while. <laughs> it's a long, <laughs> it's yeah. a long test. All right. Well, I'll, we'll come back and give you the results. You know what I want? I want Google to do a service that's like this, except for restaurants, and then making, yes. taking all the flash off the page. <laughs> and doing, doing a flash-free restaurant yes, and web hosting service. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. That, that is, would be awesome. What is I the, would pay them for that. <laughs> what is the name of the uh, new Harry Potter? Uh, Potter Moore. Potter Moore. You're talking and, about where yeah, you this the is, this is uh, J.K. Rowling's doing a site. Now, J.K. Rowling's original site was all flash. It was the worst thing Pretty I ever bleak. saw in my life. I yeah. love that you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's part of my job. Right. <laughs> it's part of my job. Now, unfortunately, this is closed to uh, signups, but I would bet, just looking at it, don't you think it's going to be all Flash? It's going to be a huge amount of Flash. And then we get the, the, video, the, the, yeah. the video of J.K. No, Rowling, which a for a while video. didn't register. years after the first Harry Potter book was published, I'm still astonished and delighted by the response the stories make. Rich. Only now, I'm yeah. the richest rich. woman rich. in England. <laughs> I have so much money, I can laugh at you all, but I'm going to make more. So this is going to be new Harry Potter stuff? Wasn't it enough? Wasn't seven it's books enough? It's kind of like the, um, I'm going to get in trouble with this. Uh, it's kind of like the Cimmerillion for Harry Potter in a way. Right. I think it's a Got lot it. of like Got backstory it. stuff. Right. And that makes you can kind of dive deeper into the storylines, into the people and the houses and... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, chat room, but I, I'm pretty I sure that's that what it's sense. supposed oh, to be. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I understand of it also. I mean, for yeah. diehard Harry Potter fans, we all know them. We talk or a lot. we are them. Yeah. We talk a, lo a lot about Google and others trying to buy uh, those patents, which Google didn't get, but Apple and its consortium did. There are other patents. Now, IBM sold some patents to Google. IBM owns all the patents. IBM, ever. yeah, yeah IBM. One of the reasons IBM is still around is a, is a player is because they have so many patents. Mm -hmm. uh, Google uh, acquired 1,000 uh, patents. And I don't know if this is that Google wants to become a patent troll. It's more just... It's, it's like defensive. Defensive, yeah. yeah. They, I think they feel really threatened after the, the Nortel patent. Thing. They felt threatened before it. They still have less than a thousand patents total. Well, now they really? finally have that's over. All they have? Yeah, yeah. They had like so they more than doubled something. their patents. Yeah, yeah. And that's why that's why it was so vital that they really needed to win those six thousand plus Nortel patents. And uh, I Apple think and Apple Microsoft. and Microsoft realized that and just swooped in there and uh, outbid screwed them. them. Very interesting. But yeah, I mean, Google's stance now is that they're. Um, there are plenty of patents out there, they say, and they'll uh, they'll go after every uh, every one of them. They're you know they're trying to get to the point where you know they they reach um, you know mutual assured destruction where they just right. uh, they so stop getting really sued almost, by everyone. It almost doesn't even matter what the patents are for, right? Because yeah, you don't they don't need to cancel each other out necessarily. They just need to be able to sue other people if oh, other people well, are going to sue, sue them. Yeah, you're going to sue me for that. Like, I'm going to sue you it's for like that. The, right. the companies are buying weapons, you know, right. for it's these exactly for these right. battles with shields and guns. It's really odd. It's really funny because okay, so this um, this American Life just did a show about right. this whole thing yeah. Yeah. Uh, last yeah. week, I think, yes. or the week before, and yeah. it's a, it's an amazing program. If 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 you know a lot about this space, nothing surprising in there, but. Many of the terms that they use to describe patents are terms that are, you know, mutually assured destruction, you know, we <laughs> weapons war. of, yeah, nuclear war, weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it is very much Cold War-like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it is the way you combat your opponents without actually attacking them. Can we all conclude that just software patents are a terrible idea? Let's just get mm -hmm. rid of them? Or is there any justification? Is there any, you know, it's funny, I got in a little battle with Neil I. Patel, who kind of believes in software patents. I was a little surprised. I don't think there's any justification for it. Let's get rid of them. Look at the wasted amount of money, time, innovation that's lost because of software patents. Well, I think the problem with software patents is that things are patented under the guise of software patents that are just conceptual. Right. Uh, and that's, I think, where, I mean, there are two really big problems. There's the conceptual patents that are just very broad, 
and that don't really make any sense as patents because patents are supposed to be non-obvious. Uh, and then there are these, you know, this other class of patents, which is just duplicating stuff that's already been patented. So you have duplication, and then you also have concept. Patents are supposed to be about specific, uh, specific ideas and processes. So if you're talking about like, you know, there are infinite ways to, you know, add and subtract and divide numbers to get to a million. So if you're talking about one specific way to do that, that's very different from the concept of adding numbers until you get to a million. So do we, we just need to reform the system? I not, think. I think. Really. Uh, well, no matter what happens, we have to. It's so yeah. right. And they, tr and they tried to do that, and they only did. You know, they they had limited its success. I think they they reformed a bit of the patent office, how it works, or whatever. And that, there were some pluses in that, but overall, the system is still the <laughs> same. And I mean, this thing this keeps coming up and up uh, up over and over again. It's like um, Google. This is the big story now because Google. Their mentality has always been like, oh, we don't really need to worry about the patent issue. And so they're the that's guy who everyone is coming after. And that's right. why this is a story now. It's not just Android patents. It's the, right. the, the other thing, you know, the, the MPEG-LA <laughs> stuff. VPA, yeah. Let's and, talk um, about that. Well, go ahead. But it's, you know, like Microsoft back in the day, even though they're now a big patent player, they used to have a similar mentality where they didn't think that they needed, you know, to get all these patents until everyone started coming after them. And now they're one of the big players. And this is going to force Google to be one of the big players in it. And I think that, you know, the problem might go away for a little bit once Google gets up to their level that where they can uh, you know dissuade these other attacks from coming up but then it will keep coming up again when some other player is up there. Well, don't you well, yeah, it's, the, it's totally unsustainable. You get the sense that the people who are granting the software patents don't really understand what the right. patents they get, yeah, they get a certain. I think right. they get like 12 hours or something to look at one and if they make a mistake then it's you know weeks and, or and, years and, and of work. And there's no domain expertise that. required. It's not right. like the people who are reviewing software patents have to be former right. software right. engineers. Right. And that's, that's a you know, I think you could probably solve like 80% of the problems just by ensuring domain expertise of patent review. Yeah. It's it's just top to bottom. Nail, I also broken. suggested making it very expensive to pursue a patent, which eliminates I think I think in many patents. ways that's actually worse because that, right mm -hmm. now, it's broken to the point where only, you know, the big What's players... What's the little guy do? Yeah, exactly. If, if, if you're a small startup and you have no defense against this, then right. it just gets even worse, worse. when right. your one potential defense is now swept out from right. underneath you. Right. So MPEG LA is the company that owns uh, the H.264 patent. It's a consortium right. of a bunch of different companies. They said, well, we'll never charge royalties for small companies you know there's a real risk I mean we uh, we distribute stuff in h.264 there's the real very real risk that they could come along and say to podcasters for instance hey we well, you know, pay up because you're using h.264 they said oh we'll never do that so Google suggested they purchased web uh, M uh, which is uh, a codec and uh, underlying that is VP8 and they said look we're gonna open source this we're gonna buy this we're gonna open source it we're gonna say uh, we're going to, you know, on to the company that developed VP8. We own them, and we're going to give you perpetual royalty-free licenses to the patents on VP8. So everybody just use it. It was, it was their proposal to use it in HTML5. Well, now MPEG-LA has fired back, and they say, well, it turns out 12 companies have patents essential to the VP8 algorithm, and that, in fact, Google isn't going to be able uh, to either indemnify or uh, uh, give you royalty-free licenses. Well, the good news here is nobody actually uses WebM. <laughs> well, Except Google. Everybody right. uses H.264. I mean, this is a little scary. Well, yeah. I mean, both Google and Mozilla. So Mozilla is obviously the huge open source player. Google less so that they're trying to, you know, say that they're always open about everything. But, uh, but if they could both agree, for instance, to use WebM. Yes. And, and Mozilla is always... Because one of the reasons that Google says that they got, that they're doing this whole WebM thing is because Mozilla would never get on board with H.264 uh, fully. Right. Um, because they, they will not use something that's, that's patent encumbered at all. And so they did not build in to the browser the ability to play back H.264. Right, right. And so they won't do that and so HTML5 can't move forward with using that. Uh, there is no, right now in HTML5, the bracket video bracket doesn't call on anything because of right. this. There's, right. no, there's no support for anything. Um, and so Google, you know, has said that they are going to support this basically because, you know, Mozilla is supporting this and they agree with that stance that this is the right thing to do, that they think that um, they can, you know, prove that this is the open source way to do it. The problem has been, and people have been saying this, you know, they, they're no one's sure that these are fully patent protected and what happens, you know, why would everyone switch over to using that? Um, you know, of course, at the same time on the opposite ends, Apple and Microsoft and many others are the players who are a part of the, the MPEG LA consortium, so they all have, you know, conflicting interests here about this but uh, it's another, you know, mucked up situation. 
We're to take a break. When we come back, the biggest story, the story that everybody on Google Plus wanted us to talk about, uh, AT&T has said, oh, you know, that unlimited plan that you guys have grandfathered in? Eh, not so fast. We'll talk about throttling. And there's a few people who'd like to throttle AT&T right now. Before I do, though, let me talk about FreshBooks. FreshBooks.com, if you'd like to follow along with me at home. It, uh, you know, it's funny. I found out about FreshBooks myself. It started using them seven years ago. Uh, because I was uh, still a freelancer. I was working up in Canada uh, doing uh, the TV shows up there and, and would bill Rogers every month. And I just hated making invoices. You know, you launch Excel or Word or something and, you know, you print it out and you mail it to them and you hope you remember to do it at the end of the month. And if you don't, you hope you remember to do it it's at the end hassle. of the next. It's a pain in the butt. So she said, look, hey, there's this really cool site. It's Amber. Amber did, not you. No. Amber MacArthur did. And uh, she said, look, this is a really cool site. It's very Web 2.0. It's called FreshBooks. Some Toronto uh, folks created it. And I started using this, and it was just a lifesaver. I put my logo on the page. It sends out email invoices. It'll also print. I used to print for Rogers. I would print and send an email invoice. But this, they, I mean, now, now 2 million people have used FreshBooks. It is so cool. They've added some really nice features. For instance, um, now with FreshBooks, they have a Pay Me Now button right in the invoice so you know let's play, you know i think a lot of times your clients want to pay you right away it's just a pain just as much as invoices are paying paying the bills is a pain so now they just click the button and they can use a credit card or paypal or authorized net or they have, there's 11 other payment game gateways just to pay you right away you can even set up automatic payments which is so cool automatic invoicing automatic payments so you both are kind of out of the loop. It just happens for you. Uh, this was nice for me because I worked in Canada. It, it does all the currencies. It does the currency trans, uh, uh, you know, uh, translations automatically. Uh, for an additional fee, they will print it out, stamp it, and mail it for you, which I think is really great. If you do time and hours, they have an, an iPhone app, but there's also a web app that will keep track of your time and hours and then put it right in the bill. So many nice features on this. If you're still doing invoices the old way, by hand, Check it out. Here's the deal. Go to FreshBooks.com right now, and you can start for free. Free for the first three clients. Easily upgraded to 25 clients for about 20 bucks a month. It's very affordable. But free for the first three. Forever. I mean, that's a really nice deal. It'll only take you about a minute to set up an account. And once you've got it, you are going to love it. And by the way, they are giving away a birthday cake to one of our audience members Every week, you don't have to be, uh, it doesn't you have to be your birthday to get the birthday cake. Just sign up and let them know you heard about it on Twit. Freshbooks.com. Make bill, billing and invoicing absolutely painless. It's, it's just great. One of the first Web 2.0 sites I ever used. And I still have a real soft spot for them. They're just fantastic. Free for the first three. Freshbooks.com. Thank them for their support of this week in tech. Uh, here's the, I think you did this chart, didn't you, MG? Is that your chart? No. This is from Ars Technica. No. Uh, the co I love this. Uh, they did a nice job of putting together all the uh, costs of data from all the different people. Oh, it's Apple Insider that did this. AppleInsider.com did this chart. But unfortunately, AT&T is going to throttle the heaviest Unlimited data users starting October 1st. Do you have an unlimited plan, Sarah? Still? People who want it the Did most. Did you grandfather? Yeah, the ones who want it. Yeah. Well, I do for my iPad, yeah, yeah, because I started on AT&T. But what's funny about this story, I kind of have to just chuckle, is that I moved over from AT&T to Verizon because AT&T was downright unusable in our apartment and um, Verizon many other on this places. IPad. So I had a I decided even though I know that data is overall going to be a little bit slower in Verizon, I'm willing to take that hit because I want my, my want tablet or my phone to be stable overall. Yeah. And to think that AT and T is going to throttle people who are heavy users. And I'm totally in that 5% bracket. I mean it's like if I if it means five hours of streaming music per month, that's me. Um, that I just kind of have to laugh because it's like, well, what else do they have if they're not going to be any faster data-wise? That's a good point. Why use at and I don't know. I mean, if some people say, I don't have a problem with at and It works just fine in my town. That's great. It doesn't work fine not in San Francisco. Not in the Francisco. Bay Area. Nope. So that's why I moved. So I think, I, I, don't, I don't know what, what the problem is. Well, there's a lot of irate users. Let me just put it that way. October 1st, they don't say what kind of throttling. 
It says, starting October 1st, smartphone customers with unlimited data plans may experience reduced speeds once their usage in a billing cycle reaches the level, you can't even know this, by the way, that puts you among the top 5% of heaviest data users. You don't even know that. It would just happen. It's not like, oh, you've used 4 gigabytes, you've used 5 gigabytes. No. You just have to be in this magic top 5%. I think that's annoying. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I don't really personally get much joy out of defending AT&T. Uh, oh, they, I think you're enjoying it right now. Man, they are... Just to be I just contrary. I want to toss my phone out the window <laughs> at any given moment. But, I mean, who, how, honestly, how many people does this really affect? Well, they say, very, they say very few. An, they, extraordinary, they, they, an extraordinarily small, well, it's 5%, yeah, they 1 say, in 20. Exactly, 5%, 1 in 20, and what are you doing to kind of get to that point? I mean, it's still You're kind of You're watching Twit? What, live every, yeah, every, all the every time. day? That's not stop. Not on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Highly recommended. Yeah. That's <laughs> a good thing to do. Well, I think I think your experience would be better on Wi-Fi. You're gonna get higher quality video. Maybe you're mobile. Maybe you don't have Wi-Fi nearby. Yeah. You know, actually, I suspect these top five percent. A lot of them don't. They use 3G for their internet, their main computer, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think that's mm. that's that probably more than a few people who do that. Uh, moving around, exactly. Or uh, truck drivers. I know they do that. I went through my um my bandwidth on my iPad and. Three days last month. Three days. How many, how many you gigs had, you did had you like buy? You had like the lowest one, right? Like yeah. 150 megs or something. Well, no, of course you went through it. Three days. Or two, 200. Yeah. Or whatever. That's when I laugh at the Chromebook. You get 100 megs a month. Yeah. That's right. like what That's is generous. that? I yeah. wish I had unlimited <laughs> on my iPad. That would be nice. That's attempting to load my Gmail once. Yeah. In the morning. <laughs> 100 megs. I, I don't even know. I can't even think of what how how what is 100 megs? Nothing. Oh, here's my speed comparison. It came in. Optimized, you get it in a second less. It's 20 percent or 18.5 percent improvement in page load time. And if you go there the second time, so they are doing so some the caching. Cache, yeah. mm -hmm. 23 percent improvement. So that's Not worth bad. it. Now it's free right now if you can get into the program. I would do that. And we are already, by the way, this is PHP. We're doing all that PHP caching and stuff. I mean, we do a lot of caching. So this is a, a dynamic page, but it is heavily cached. And that's a pretty big improvement. I would do that. And and look, they made a movie for me. Let's see. Yeah, it shows the original the loads optimized next to each other. Oh, look at that! Holy cow! Oh. It's black and white. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they also turn your they turn your side That's, that's what you have to give up. <laughs> 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 Remember that they used to do that on AOL. Every all the video, all the uh, images would be squunched beyond uh, repair. Yeah. Is that a technical term? Squunched. Squunched. It is. It's, it's exactly a technical term. Well, you never uh, heard that one? I haven't actually. Squunched. Squunched. You never heard I'm that? I'm gonna add that to my mm. vocabulary. Uh, topiary. He did it for the lulls. Ryan Massey on uh, Google Plus suggested we talk about the lulls sec story. British police arrested a teenager yesterday, actually uh, on July 27th. Um, they said it's Topiary, who of course is the, the guy who has been uh, chatting with people on Twitter and other places. He's got a good sense of humor. He's a funny guy. Um, lulls sec they think might have deliberately tricked the authorities into believing that somebody else is the real Topiary. That Are they that about smart? Right. Yeah. The according to an article uh, published in the Daily Tech website by Jason Mick, the the real Topiary is a 23 year old Swedish hacker, not a teenager from Shetland. He's got a chat log. Do you think there's just one Topiary, or is it like that? As like V? Is it like that movie? What's it, what's that movie? V for Vendetta. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. V for Vendetta. Exactly. I think that they would. Yeah, I, I am Spartacus. I guess it's possible that Topiary is just one person physically living in Sweden or wherever, but it makes more sense that it's a group of people because that's how this whole anonymous Lulsec organization, the, it's all founded on the, the idea that you can't just arrest somebody and the whole thing's going to stop because there are mm -hmm. too many of us and we're all working together and you don't know who we are. Topiary's Twitter feed is, has gone silent. But maybe well, if they that's want, part of the if game. They want the authorities right. to think that he's yeah. in custody. This then. reminds me a lot of V for Vendetta. <laughs> I love this. They're playing with everybody. Well, it could, I mean, it could be the other way, too, where he actually wants to be the only, or she or who, whoever, they want to be the only topiary. But when you're really underground like this, you can't exactly you come can't out and say, say like, oh, that guy's not topiary. I, I, actually, yeah, what you want is for everybody to think he's topiary. In, yeah. in some ways, yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean, if you you're feel doing bad a for the reputation, kid. but. Right. Yeah. So uh, H.R. 1981 passed the House Judiciary Committee on Thursday. It's the ISP data retention bill. 
of course, they use child pornography as always Ooh. as the as the uh, straw man. You don't that this want is, this, right? Oh man, uh, who, pass this bill then. You must be in favor of child pornography if you don't that. like this yeah. idea. Uh, what it does is requires internet service providers to keep 12-month logs of customers' names, credit card information, and other identifying information so that law enforcement can go to the ISP and say, hey, who did that when? Now, admittedly, uh, it could, you know, if you were a child pornographer, this, you know, that, if they wanted that information to be valuable. But there's lots of other things, including piracy, that this might be useful for. Center for Democracy and Technology says we don't see that this would help in any way catch criminals involved in child pornography. It's going to be a tiny percentage of the cases law enforcement uses. This also sounds like it's going to get hacked in, you know, six hours. Yeah, it, you know, it's, this is, it's just so easy to get around. I mean, okay, go to is the it? public you... library, spoof your oh, yeah. address. I just mean, don't use on. your home computer. Yeah, or you know, use your use your neighbor's internet connection. I mean, there's just it's it's so incredibly easy. That's to get the real problem, this though, is to assume that this was the IP address that this came in on. Yeah, and this, <laughs> and this then is now this it's, is it's got to be become Ryan. an issue because right. wasn't there somebody recently who was picked up? He was for yeah. child yeah. pornography. Yeah. Squad moved in. It was his right. neighbor using his that? Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, well, you might want to keep your eye on HR 1981. And uh, sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah. HR 1984. Yeah. Oh. It should be, shouldn't oh. it? They got, they missed it by three. They missed it by three. Well done. Um, moving on. Let's see what else. And you, you've got all the stories there. If anybody wants to, pay, I'm not going to get to all of them. The Walkman is back. That's exciting. I'm so confused. Are you excited about that? I, you just, yeah, you just skip like a... five stories and you, and you I'm settled just... on the Walkman story. You don't think that's <laughs> no, a? We didn't skip five stories. Uh, I'm, that's asking nice you, I'm asking you whatever you want to talk about. Listen, I will say that the Walkman, I like it because there's a karaoke button. So yes, exactly. You, you know me, girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, we, I, ha we have karaoke together. I really want to do mm -hmm. a twit lip dub. Wonderful. In I'm here in. in the studio, wouldn't that be fun? It would be pretty fun. Yeah. You guys did one. You did a great one at Revision Three. We did. Yes. I like that. It was. That it was, was fun. Pre, pre, pre was uh, before my time. Yeah. Pre Veronica. Yeah. Who is Chameleonaire? <laughs> MG <laughs> you know, I have to say, I'm like, why does he keep coming? I up? would say this on the car ride up here. I, I was think like, he's I, topiary, seen him speak actually. At, <laughs> at tech conferences, he's been like on panels. It's at, a great name. I don't I know what it means. I asked MG, why do we keep talking about Chameleon Air? I don't know one of his songs, and MG says because he goes to every conference. I said, he's why does he go to every uh, tech conference? You don't know all the words to, to Ride and Dirty. No, I don't. Oh, he's the Ride and Dirty guy. I thought he was the backup. This is why Spotify was invented. I only know the. This is going to be. Know, the Weird Al version, white and nerdy. Up. White and nerdy. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a chameleon or spoof. Apparently. That's the uh, only one I know. So he's maybe so not I know the that song. That one. I know that song. Is that his famous song? Let's yeah, I think he won a Grammy for it. Well, there you go. I don't I'm know just, for that or for that. He's not on Spotify. Or, I don't know apparently. what the kids are listening to. Oh, no, to loading. It's loading. Spotify's still loading. Is, is yes. he going to also win a Crunchy for best hip hop star in the tech community? He does. He's well on his way. He says, he says I've used Android devices and they suck. Okay. So he was at, so he, he came to... Was it Disrupt? Uh, no, it was our the, the mobile. smaller, yeah, mobile crunch-up event thing on Friday uh, down in Palo Alto at the AOL offices, actually. And um, he got up at the very end of the, uh, of the conference. You got the song. I got it. I got it. I'm okay. Gonna, you pump it up in the house, and we're going to have a dance party right after MG explains it. Um, and so he got up, and like I was saying earlier, we had uh, Mateus Duarte uh, from Android up there, and Chameleon Air asked him just, you know, right to his face, just... Um, you know, said basically, I've tried to use so many Android devices out there, and they all suck. Um, so this guy's like you guys. Yeah. What, what's what's Chameleon's <laughs> uh, birth name? Do we know? Um, it's on his Crunchbase profile. Okay. <laughs> he has a Crunchbase yeah. profile. Just, it's, just, it's just funny when we. Yeah. And then Chameleon are asked. This is riding dirty. All right, everybody, let's go. Is this gonna get filthy in a minute? I don't know. I've never heard this. This is from Everybody Wants a Thug, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I should explain the context behind this song and what it's about, but uh, <laughs> you might be able to use your imagination. I thought oh, it was just, you know, when you need a, a new car. exhaust <laughs> pipe or something, you're right. riding yeah. dirty. Maybe you didn't use mobile oil. Yeah. With, uh, right. You didn't get yeah. your smog, smog check. No smog yeah. check. No smog check. Yeah. Yeah. Right. option. Tra I'm traded right. in your dancer. Prius. He's, he's riding dirty. I am dirty. a bad dancer. I'm glad that's over. So this is my favorite paragraph from M.G. Sigler's Chameleon Air pleads with Android Design to lead to give him a decent device. My favorite 
but Chameleonaire kept pressing. <laughs> he wanted a He's single, the hard clear answer. Yeah. Which Android device should he use? <laughs> This is the Duarte guy. This is yeah, the yeah, Sicilian. Yeah. yeah, he basically told him, uh, you know, stay tuned. We're going to have some better devices coming he out says, for you. I'm hoping the Which has been soon. their stock answer. So which has always been the answer. Yes, We're going to yes, yes, have right. an Android phone <laughs> right. that you are going to love, said Duarte. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. It, was, it, like was, that? it was a great, it was a fun moment, though. Uh, in a, you know, a brief moment of, of levity. In the, <laughs> in the Why otherwise. is Chameleonaire at your event? Uh, he's the. Uh, I don't he know. actually. Oh, he he tech really like technology, and he, so he goes. Or who how did who he? Who doesn't well, like technology? I mean, technology. I know. Right. I yeah. Didn't he, he has an app or, or some. I, some he sort was of doing something for a while. He has like some you know startup investments or something that he was doing. But he, I mean, he gets up there and he's been on stage before at Disrupt, and he I is like very that. knowledgeable I about like what. That. And he asks the best questions usually because it's like instead of all of us thinking you know amongst each other and we're all like speaking in circles, you know he. Thinks more like uh, outside the box, yeah, like a regu why, regular. Tech why is user. this no good? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great question, actually. Yeah. It's kind of funny how anytime someone's more well known for a song called "Writing Dirty" or for being a very successful actor or something like that, when they get really interested in technology, all the rest of us go, "What are they doing here?" <laughs> right. I think it's less than yeah. that. I think we're just more like kind of confused. Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Are you for, for real? Do you really care? Are you sure. Yeah, it happens. By the way, when I searched, I wish for more people were like me too. Interested in technology. Did, did you yeah. Try and search cool for writing dirty. I, you know, when I searched for writing yeah, dirty, don't look at the images. Weird Al's came up. And, okay, okay. Uh, oh, the images? Yeah, don't, well, don't do that. Should I go to Urban Dictionary and <laughs> yeah. look it up? Yeah, you can. Yeah, that might. Just not up on the screen. <laughs> yeah. That's where I would always go when you kids. Or blur were... the whole thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> It doesn't have quite the bass. Yes, what we need to do, do is stick with the beat. You're going real fast. Think I'm just too white and nerdy. We should get the audience the shot where no one is moving. Do you sit still? <laughs> They're Some, like, what's this the dead hell? out there? <laughs> I was told this would be the price is right. Where's Bob Barker? <laughs> uh, Logitech. Oh, this is so exciting. I know you've all been waiting to buy Google TV. Logitech has dropped the price to $99. They're flooding the market. We uh, we have one. It's been two ninety nine. Did you pay two ninety nine? It has yet. not remo been removed from the box. Oh. It, we've had it. You might just want to leave months. it there. Many months. Yeah. That's I bought so it for two ninety nine. And it disconnected it. I did take it out of the box. Connected it. But if they okay, so somebody asked me, should we get this? If they put Android Market on that device, and you can now suddenly play Angry Birds. Right, yeah, which you if, can on the if, Roku, if, I mean, right? You can say that to any product. If this product did this, this, and <laughs> right, this, right. with software updates, If it was just, like, if it was could. better. It would be easy for yeah, them to put the if they, if yeah, they made if they... the product better, I might use it. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. Well, maybe you should buy it for 99 bucks, and then they'd make the product better. No, that doesn't work that way. The, about, the better thing about that story, and I think that they refuted this now, or I think Engadget actually posted the, um, the, the... The correction? Yeah, the correction of it. But it was originally, when it came out, saying that... Um, there were more returns than there were sales oh, of what? the review. Exactly. Ouch. It's like, how does yeah. it? They're math? saying now they're saying like that they're that the <laughs> um, the all the reviewers returned it in addition to all the people who bought. That it. could be a part of it, but uh, no, I think they're saying that the, the the you know the actual retailers that they shipped it to. So these weren't users returning them. Returns other words, it was, from the channel. Yeah, from the channel inventory. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they which isn't any better. I mean, that's, no, that's like, worse. Still yeah. Really terrible. Right. That's Maybe worse. Maybe we shouldn't unbox it. Yeah, it's going to be a collector's item. might need item. to return it and get some money. Well, you can't sell it for two ninety nine on eBay anymore. I can tell no. you that right now. That's it on that. Uh, let's see here. Nintendo having kind of the same problem with, surprisingly, the 3DS. Price Wait, surprisingly? To 80... Whoa, didn't you think that was awesome? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if they put Android Marketplace <laughs> on it, it could be amazing. It's true, oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, that's like they just have that. They have their new Android phones. This is 3D one, right? And that's like uh, there the are same a bunch thing. of 3D it's, phones. It's such What's a, the deal? It's a novelty thing that's like interesting for five minutes, and then we had you... somebody in the studio though. One of our fans came in with it, and he was taking pictures, and he said, "Now go like this." So that it will look cool. <laughs> and it, Chad, you saw it, right? It looked cool. See, he's nodding. Of course, he's like twelve. And, and he <laughs> and his one friend who have the 3DS can see that image, <laughs> right. and then everyone else. Everyone can. else. It's uh, lenticular, so you don't need glasses. Same thing with the right. phones; you don't need glasses. Right. And that's, you know, that's kind of cool. I get real. It's also sick really hard to see. Looking at 3D things. Low Did contrast. You, like but right they have now. a little slider that you can turn it up and down, which I think is so silly. Could you imagine having that as your main phone, though, like it, a 3D screen, no, trying to look at idea. that? How the amount we all look at our phones? 
So the Nintendo 3DS was 250 bucks. They're going to drop it to 169 So it didn't go down to $80. It went down by $80. Mm -hmm. Still not enough. Wasn't Amazon well, having so a real hard a really time? Didn't they take the 3DS off the store for a while, too? I believe Amazon yeah, took the 3DS down. Yeah, they did. I don't remember down. why. Wait, are you, are are you recusing from Sorry, this or not? Sorry, I'm just I'm stating a fact. I wasn't <laughs> making a judgment call. As, as I do a, so, a show on the PlayStation Network, I should recuse myself but from this discussion of gaming consoles Oh, yeah, and Nintendo. Handles. No, you can, di you can dish. We, we were talking we're about this, uh, this last week Jumping. on TNT and how... At least most of us on the show said, listen, Nintendo has been somewhat vocal about how a lot of mobile gaming uh, apps and the experience is just kind of crappy. And they're more, they're coming from a, a high quality standpoint and they're just not really going to get into that game. And they're almost more annoyed than anything else by how the quality of the gaming experience has been diminished by all of these just developers putting out something that's kind of stupid. Well, you see, you look at numbers like this and you think, okay, well, Nintendo has to at least admit that whether they think it's crap or not, it's eating into their market. Right. Yeah, they see the train coming, but they're paralyzed to act. And well, the funny I, yeah. thing is they, they more than anybody else, more than Microsoft or Sony, they're, you know, they've been vocal about the fact that Apple is kind of their new, they, they called it the competitor of the future, right? So what I've been saying for years is, okay, they've got the biggest and, and arguably one of the best game publishing houses in the world. I mean, they build their entire hardware business around their franchises, mm -hmm. just go make software. If the gaming right. experience is so crap on phones, go put Mario well, Kart on some phones. Sega ended yeah. up doing, right? Exactly. Yeah. They couldn't that's hack right. the hardware business. Right. The hardware right. business was dragging them down. They almost died. They brought back, they, you know, they brought the brand back as a software business, licensed the IP, did all kinds of stuff like that on the software those side, things, and they're doing they, well. Those would be massive if they got, like, Mario and Zelda on the iPhone. It would be outrageous. Like, yeah. That's all I would do. They yeah. would be, would be huge. They'd make more the money on that instantly. I know. Pokemon. It's, it's, it, I think it's a very stuff. Japanese way of approaching the problem, you know. Very, they're trying to control the, it end to end. Get out of the hardware business. Get out of the hardware business. Tom Merritt, speaking of TNT, Tom Merritt's across the room. But he's not. He's going to do this on video. <laughs> I saw him come in. Uh, what's coming up next week or this week? Uh, the week ahead with Tom Merritt from Tech News Today in New York City. That's a look at the week ahead. Back to you. Lee. <laughs> it, was, it was short. It was a short Did you week. Catch it? it was week a short week ahead. <laughs> let me, week let, let, really me listen. let me start over. <laughs> hey, thanks, Leo. Here's a look at. What we'll be covering on Tech News Today in the week ahead. Today, Sunday, July 31st, all Google profiles go public. We'll see if there's any fallout from that. Also today, the Motorola Photon 4G comes to Sprint for $200 on contracts. Ooh, cool. And a lot of stuff happening today. Pottermore opens for registration. Ooh. If you're a Harry Potter fan, only way to get the e-books. And Sony ID theft protection had been extended to today, July 31st. So scramble if you want to sign up for that. Coming up on Wednesday, August 3rd, Blackberry Fan Night happens in Toronto at might be our first look at BlackBerry OS 7. T-Mobile makes the HTC Wildfire S official available for 80 bucks on Wednesday. Wow. And finally on Wednesday, Samsung's TouchWiz UX update for the Tab 10.1 is available, but only in person if you show up at their press event in New York City. That's a look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. There you go, Tom Merritt. Thank you. TNT is on Twitter every Monday through Friday, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. Uh, that would be 21.30 UTC at live.twit.com. It's a really good show. You guys TV, should watch it. And I think somebody named Sarah Lane might appear on that show along with yeah. Ayaz Akhtar. So Twitter, I didn't know this because I had been using Google+, Plus, has started injecting paid tweets into the stream. That was the thing everybody said. That will be the end of Twitter when they right. do it. But it's so they're well, yes, injecting yes no. tweets into the stream if you follow a brand. Yeah. Oh, so you you're have you're to follow following. them. Right. So if right. you if I'm following Wouldn't I see HP, it anyway? I don't understand. You would, but now they pin it basically to the top when you re when you oh. load a page for the first time or if you reload it, you'll well, see it again. Well, that's not so bad. And so then if, it gets yeah. pushed out. If if I don't follow JetBlue in this example, I don't see this even if it's a paid no, tweet. Right. That's right. right. That's nice cuz you're but, kind but of then, opting in in a way. Right. Yeah. Or in, but then yeah, the next phase will be what it's probably Well, when they don't make any money on is, right. is, is, Twitter seems to be struggling. They've they fired a bunch of people. Uh, they brought back Jack Dorsey, even though he has a real job uh, with Square. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's very, I don't understand how he can yeah. run two companies. But anyway. They're really close to each other. He just they walks are, a few blocks. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. You just yeah. walk down the street? Okay, yeah. this is uh, Twitter That's afternoon. how you do it. Square in the morning, sure the Twitter in the in afternoon. Um, what, uh, I don't know if Google Plus is going to put them out of business, but it seems like they've really been struggling to, to make a... Well, a they're, you know, they're raising yet more money. Um, they'll be around for a long time. But they uh, they do need to figure out how to make money, and this is, you know, the most significant sense. step forward yet to do that. You know, they right. keep trying these little things. They have the um, 
the uh, promoted topics in the uh, in the trending area. They have it in the search. And the now problem is nobody sees trend. that because third-party apps don't show. Well, it. are you even going to see these promoted tweets now if you're using? I guess a you will. If no, it's not, not yet. Yeah, they, I didn't yeah. notice it either. They, uh, oh, it doesn't it's only on Twitter.com right now. So they far. will pump it through there. The official client at least. But Twitter.com is the biggest client. Yes, in terms of like the share of right, right. What people? Yeah, yeah. So it's a good it's a good way to test the theory. I think how it works. Yeah, it seems like the API level. I don't know about you guys. I don't follow too many brands, but I'm sure there's a few I follow and it's like if I'm already following a brand to have it show up a little Not bit more bad. prominently in my stream Not I'm already bad. asking right. to well, get that's the updates. Thing. It's like a fine idea it's just is that aggressive enough for them to actually make a legitimate amount of money you know like how much would you pay for that? I bet that at least right. in the beginning it will be because brands won't know any better. They'll right. Be like, oh, this sounds like a really great idea. <laughs> right, Here's fifty thousand right. dollars to have my tweet right. up there for twenty four hours. They say they're they're measuring engagement though in an interesting way because they do more than just click throughs. It's also the number of retweets and the number of times it's favorited, um, which is kind of an interesting metric. See, I, I favorite stuff means. all the time as a bookmarking. People use there it for different nice. reasons. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. It, they shouldn't really. But that's how they, that's how they charge. They only charge um, the advertisers when one of those three things happens. So. I think Twitter's also smart enough to know that if they were just to start injecting sponsored tweets into our uh, uh, timelines, everyone would go uh, bad shit. Like bad the dick bar. Crap. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the SH word. Um, I, myself included. So it's like if you ju if you start small and you get a certain amount of people used to seeing this kind of thing, then mm -hmm. there's less to be up in arms about when they start popping up. Right. Uh, I think the uh, funny thing on Twitter rush. is yeah. <laughs> people will follow you on Twitter unless you start posting things. And then as soon as you start using Twitter, people get irate. It's happened to me. Go, it just happened out. to President Obama. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> he, so he, was po he posted because, of course, we've got this thing, the debt ceiling deadlock, which uh, could be pretty bad. On Friday afternoon, he has 9 million followers. He told them to tweet your congressman, your Republican congressman, to promote a bipartisan solution to the deficit crisis. And then... He began tweeting out the Twitter handles of Republican congressmen state by state. In one day, he lost 37,000 followers That's because nobody wants right. that. That's hey, noise. Hey, you, keep it down. Shh. Whoever you. Hey, hey, hey you, president. Hey, you guys. Hey, hey president, stop Quit it. Quit spamming me. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. I understand. Barack, it's okay. I'll come back. <laughs> Actually, it turns out the Republicans gained... Many of these followers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He helped their accounts. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know what? You're so annoying. I'm going to vote against the compromise. <laughs> well, I kept reading the headlines wrong and seeing like something like Barack Obama, Twitter compromise. I was like, oh my God, is it, did his account get hacked? <laughs> I was like, oh wait, that's not what that means at all. Didn't that already happen once? Um, what? Yes, he did. Yes, he got hacked. Like years ago. Yes, he, yes, he did right. In the he, he's one of stuff. them. Yeah. Uh, I don't By know. The way, I, I think that whole thing was kind of silly, though. Like thirty-seven thousand. Okay, that's not I mean, a lot. That's, that's a margin of error. You can thing, lose. You can lose that, that on just yeah. any given day when you know Twitter shuts down spam accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yes. like a third of a percent. I just <laughs> did the math on that. It's a very, I don't know. I would expect to lose more than that if I were doing something like that. You on would my, on my Twitter account. You would, and you don't have nine million followers. Exactly. You have eight million. Lady Gaga eight has 12, twelve million. Yeah. Twelve million. Maybe he should hire her to do that. You know who's going to gain a lot of followers? Lady Big Mac. Watch this. Now, I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume by now you're all familiar with Twitter, the social networking site that has become an increasingly popular outlet for news about Justin Bieber and popular revolutions. Did you also know it's a great newsroom feedback delivery system? We've been asking you all morning what your favorite fast food guilty pleasure is. Uh, well, Lady Big Mac on Twitter, five guys burgers and fries. Wait, what? <laughs> five guys is Lady Big Mac's favorite burger place? Isn't that like the Quaker Oats guy doing an ad campaign for Farina? <laughs> what? It's good. It's good. Yeah, fine. They got 24 hours to fill. They're just having a little bit of fun. At least the level of Twitter questions is at the preferred choice in chopped meat sandwich chain level. We want to know if a politician's private transgressions matter to their public life. Lady Big Mac on Twitter. <laughs> She's back! A decision by the president not to go public with the Bin Laden death photos. We want to know what you think about the president's decision. Lady Big Mac yep. wrote us on Twitter, the president is right. We do not need to see... So who is Lady Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> Again with Lady Big Mac? 
All right. I don't want to play You got to pull up her profile. I actually, I saw this the other night when I was watching The Daily Show. And yeah. I went so and I pulled funny. up the profile. It's pretty funny. It's like, is, is she's like a grandmother she, or something. Well, she doesn't look that old. That's pretty funny. Oh. Wait a minute. All right. Let me, let me, let me get my. That picture uh, looks like it's from the 70s, so maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, her, her, her about thing, I think, says she is a grandma. I think she calls that out. Well, good for her. She's using the social media. Yeah, networking. wife, mother, grandma. It's all awesome. over the news. Well, and to be fair, I had five guys for the first time last week. It was You had five guys last week? It was awesome. Oh, the burgers. Leo. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I I picked up on you, that. Yeah, we, we play Ryan right right Dirty. And and all I heard uh, was I had five then. guys last week. don't want those week. kinds of jokes. <laughs> Not everybody in Calif outside of California knows that five guys is a burger's place. It is. And a very good one. And I had never had, yeah. had that I have not even heard before. of it. It's funny that you I would know. defend Lady Big Mac by saying, well, you know, actually, Five Guys pretty is pretty good. good. Yeah. Uh, there she is, Ruth Lady Big Mac, lower Alabama, wife, mother, grandmother, retired bookkeeper, and political junkie, and apparently somebody who's very good at getting on the network she news. She watches a lot of news. you got to wonder, yeah. uh, the researchers that they must have at The Daily Show, to go through all that video and find, like, five mentions of Lady Big Mac. Right. There was that, that whole clip, if you're... If you're a Daily Show it, it's a fan, very, it's, worth it's watching. very funny. And that's that's our um, that's our about, fair use how defense. Many, how many Twitter followers did she general. gain? Did, uh, oh, I don't know. She doesn't have that many. She only has 2,400 yeah, like followers. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. though, I think Sock Puppet. What? I don't what? think she's real. You, you think she's like no, I think, I think she, she, she's No, no, no. I think it's like probably an account that CNN set up so they could like say something. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would All right, be so awesome. Let's do this. I want everybody watching or listening to Twit right now to follow Lady Big Mac. Oh, Are, are we still doing? doing these Why not? experiments? Let's just do it. Okay. I'm going to follow her. Right. I'll follow her. It's did, this you, easy. did you get the count before? Yeah, 2401. But she, she right. tweets about all sorts of stuff. I don't think she is a CNN Look, account. Follow her. her oh, what? Well, she is retweeted nice. Will Wheaton. Yeah. Follow her today. You can unfollow her tomorrow. I just want to see how big we can get Lady Big Mac. Ryan, I'm with you, though, that I think a lot of these uh, people may just be uh, she's I think a lot of mechanisms to get the sound bite that I you think want. A lot, yeah, exactly. I think you're right. Why and not? I want a, a twit pic of her looking just like that with like her family. With a newspaper. Yeah, with a newspaper. Holding up a newspaper right. with today's Proof of life. Home. Yeah. No, actually, <laughs> wouldn't that be, though, if that would be a huge scandal? I mean, it's not exactly, you know, the news of the world level scandal, but a huge scandal if you found out that CBS, ABC, and NBC were making fake Twitter accounts. That's like the fake movie reviewers, you know, who are right. doing the... Uh, but mm. I, on the other hand, for some reason, maybe I'm just a cynic. Poor uh, Lady Big Mac, her email inbox, if she has notifications oh on... Oh, God, we did got, that. Just when got we really did Lisa awful. Tickled Pink, she thought she did something wrong because she was getting right. thousands, thousands and thousands. Um, I think I'm done. I don't want to... We've, we've, we've done everything. We played John uh, Stewart... Uh, You're over it. We're done now. We've done. We played a little chameleon air. <laughs> oh, um, Boo has a book. <gasps> Boo the dog on I Facebook. I love Boo. I love Boo. I never heard of Boo. Is that that poofy? He's it's a bangs versus beard thing. No, I. Look at that dog. He is pretty. Oh, cute. that's all. Yeah, oh, I know that's all. Look at that. My mom and I. My mom. In, in case Boo you don't too. think Boo is real, here's a video of Boo, the cutest dog in the world. I think ears. he's. I think he's not too bright. I follow him on know. Facebook. I do too, actually. And I love the videos. Yeah, oh, he's got a book. Him. Love him, love him. But you know, aren't they like brushing his hair to make him look like a? Yes, he's getting ball? groomed specifically to be cute. To be. Oh, cute. chat room is now possible. talking about Mr. Winkles, also a pretty darn cute dog. I don't That's know Mr. Winkles. Mr. Winkles. He was the hey, predecessor Boo. to Boo. Wait a minute. Oh, See what I mean? oh there's somebody before. Okay, we got to look at Mr. Winkles. Yeah, yeah Mr. Winkles. Boo was inspired by Mr. Winkles. Mr. Apparently. Winkles sure. is the OG cute dog on the internet. I see. Boo's. Yeah, you know what? Boo's I don't know Boo. Yeah. I knew Mr. Winkles, and I thought that <laughs> if Mr. You, I thought Boo was I Mr. Knew Winkles. Boo, and you are no Boo. <laughs> you, right. sir. Me, sir. I know Boo. I know Boo. Apparently, Mr. Boo? Winkle uh, is the cutest dog in the universe. Yes, yeah, see? Wow, we and, told you. And so the world this is not is nothing. This is the this ugliest is sight in the this universe. Wait, they wait should run it. this through wait. the Google speed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming on his magic saucer. Magic saucer. This, is, this is bizarre. Is this like um, hamster dance or something? <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, there's a lot of suspense. Thanks for waiting. For what, they have a generate Mr. Winkle? He, he looks, looks like just Boo. like Mr. Boo. Yeah. yeah wait. He looks like Mr. Boo with a wonky eye. <laughs> How can he be the cutest dog in the universe if he looks just like the cutest dog in the world? I'm confused now. <laughs> Why is this happening? What, what is this <laughs> awful sight? Why is this happening? Why? Alien? Savant? <laughs>
I think he's definitely a savant. <laughs> this is the ugliest <laughs> sight I have ever this seen the, in my it's, life. It's, it's actually you know, it's there's sort of only wonderful one. It's so, so what bad. breed of dog is this? Cards? Does anyone know? What is the breed? Uh, Pomeranian. Is it a Pomeranian? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Pomeranian, a, but with his hair a cut? certain way. Yeah. Okay. You have the to, like, only blow thing, the thing that would make in. this site better cute dogs. is Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got an audience. He's a Pomeranian, left in the dryer to too the long. Death. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to thank our panel for making this a fabulous... You're going to put Boo and Mr. Wickle in a dog fight? A cage match. Wouldn't that be have... fun? That's horrible. Somebody yes. call Michael Vick. Oh, he, he doesn't do that anymore. I Leo. know, he's reformed. I yes. Know. Too soon. Did you see that Foxconn wants to replace... Okay, it has a million workers, evil. and they want to replace with them with robots. robots in the next three years. Yeah, but then you got to rehire them to take care of the robots. Somebody has to maintain yeah. the robots. Yeah. Who's building the robots? If you were in China right now, I'd get a degree in robot building. That's the future. And then you have to have the security force on hand in case the robots revolt. Yeah, and oh, start I, killing them. And themselves. you know what? Yeah. I can't stop without mentioning this because we gave Apple such a hard time over the location database, right? Apple's iPhone was collecting information so they could build a Skyhook-like service. Same thing Google was doing. Turns out Microsoft also has been doing the same thing in the Windows Phone 7, gathering data from Wi-Fi uh, connections, right. along with the GPS information to create a database so that you can use Wi-Fi instead of GPS. But this is kind of funny. Microsoft left the database open <laughs> to everybody. Oh, good. So Whoops. apparently, if you want to know <laughs> where you've been or your boyfriend's been or your husband's been... Mm, this could come in handy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and Most all you need is in. yeah, all you need is their MAC address, and you can find out. What's your MAC address? <laughs> How come, here, here's my question: How come Apple got so much heat when they did this? And this story's been sitting on Gizmodo for four days. And nobody's picked it up. Well, I think I think there's some different. There's some aspects that about this are different. If I if I read it correctly, it was that if you're, it only works if your phone was put into Wi-Fi hotspot mode, and then I uh, guess only if like they scanned it. Declan McCullough was database? the guy who discovered this. Here's, so it's like, it's, it's definitely I think the not, other issue, it's not the same. It's not like you have a minute-by-minute, day-by-day tracking of where everyone is going. I think it's just points in time under specific circumstances. It's mm -hmm. not good, but it would be a lot worse. <laughs> and the other issue is, who the hell's using Windows Phone 7 anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a small amount of very satisfied customers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, we've gone full But we all really like Windows Phone But we like it. Yeah. All right, is that I'm a dig at me? What? No, we, we, all do. we all like it. Uh, Veronica is the greatest. She's on Texilla. Watch it. T E K Z Z I L L A. Oh, are you Tom now with I, the does he do Anglophile? that too? Yeah. yeah. Z. Yeah. Does he spell color with a U? He. We have a segment on TNT schedule. called the Rumor Mill, which is spelled with a U. It's I saw that. Ridiculous. Is that because of Tom? Lady Big Mac it's a just Tom tweeted. thing. Lady Big Mac just tweeted. What did she say? What'd she say? All you new followers, I don't know what you're expecting. I'm an angry, opinionated grandma that tweets about politics and getting involved. I'm so happy that happened on the show. That is awesome. Lady Big Mac, we love you. Oh my God. Keep fighting the good fight. Oh Ruth. my God. Everybody follow Lady Big Mac right now. <laughs> Oh my God! Wait a that minute, I gotta hilarious. see this. That is that is hysterical. I don't. See that it. is a real thing. Yeah, she's got a thousand followers. All you new followers. I don't know what I know it's not on the website. I'm an for angry, opinionated than grandma than that tweets about politics and getting involved. That's so funny. She does have a thousand and new followers. And now she's involved thanks to in our world. You. So you have a choice. You could buy a brick or follow Lady Big Mac. You take. You choose. Veronica, thank you for being here. It's great to have you in thank the new Thank you for having me. It looks studio. fantastic here. Thanks for bringing this guy up here, too. Because uh, I know you drive, right? He sits I in do. The, yeah, that's what I thought. It just, well, he drives sometimes, too. But no, it's, I can just yeah. see him going along. It's so humiliating. In the back, I'm in the back seat <laughs> while you're driving. He sticks his head out the window as ears flap. It's great. <laughs> Ryan Block from Gadget, GDGT.com. Great to have you once thank again. Thank you. Really appreciate your being here. Mr. M.G. Siegler from TechCrunch.com. Still their best writer. Thank you. I like the other guys, too. They're okay. But you're good. You're yeah. real good. No, thank He's you. the smartest. How many times do you file every day? Like 10 times a day? No, not that often. It's I used to, to follow you. I used to write a lot more. Um, now I do longer, so it's... You know, oh, you're doing the uh, think pieces. Yes, yeah. right. Instead of the gut, immediate gut reaction piece. You're thinking, you're pondering, you're 
cogitating or collecting your facts. I don't know if I'd go that far, but okay. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. great to have The gut you. reactions are still on your Twitter feed. <laughs> <Yeah>. Paris <laughs> Lemon, if you want to find the uh, gut reactions. Right. <laughs> and of course, Sarah Lane, who will be back tomorrow with Tech News Today. Thank you for, of on course. your day off. The social hour uh, in the morning, too. Social hour at uh, 11 a.m. That's right. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. At Sarah Lane on the Twitter, SarahLane.com. You still doing SarahLane.com? Yeah, I have a I, I, I was actually writing a blog post on my iPad the other day because I have never really done that, where I say, eh, you know, the keyboard's okay for short form stuff, but what if I actually want to write something that's, I don't know, a thousand words on my iPad? Yeah. <laughs> that's I a haven't lot finished of work. yet. That's it's, a lot of work. It's, yeah, it's quite a project. Thank you all for watching the show. We really appreciate your being here. I hope you like the new Twitbrick House. Understand this is still our field test. We haven't worked out of the kinks. Uh, yeah, I know there are little issues with audio and so forth, but uh, I do appreciate your patience and I do thank you so much for watching. If you haven't bought a brick, go to bricks.twit.tv. You too can be on the wall right behind me. You'd actually be able to see the bricks through the gear here, bricks.twit.tv. That helps build the, the best little studio in the whole wide world. We'll see you next time on, what do I say at the end of Twit? Another Twit. I gotta go to the bathroom, is in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, everybody. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.